Hello, RPPR fiends, folks, and friends. You may not know me, but my name is Wolf the Dog. I run a little old radio station on the other side of the podverse called 694.2 PTBP. And that PTBP stands for Pretending to be People. Now, Ross Payton has been nice enough to let us take over his show for an episode. Nice fella, that Ross. I'd love to take him out to dinner sometime. I promise not to devour his soul. Maybe. It just so happens that them boys from Pretended to be People and Ross Payton from Role Playing Public Radio live around the same town, and Ross was down to run the renowned playground from Countdown that is Dennis Detwiller's Night Floors. If you enjoy these strange boys' antics, check out their show, Pretending to be People, every Friday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your podcatcher of your choice. You're gonna want to start at episode one, y'all. This show is serialized, and season one is at 60-something episodes and counting. And as always, sending us from the monotony of busy work like driving, dishes, and slurping up all kinds of juices from a dumpster, to the twin suns that sink behind the lake in dim Carcosa. I've got a brand new song the Hyades shall sing, and I'm here to premiere the song of my soul for the first time as tatters flap and tears unshed it is kudzu with no backbone You'll have to side eye us. <laughs> okay. Uh, your eye it's a good attitude in. for a DM to like. Yeah. To have. So, yeah. Give you the. Yeah. <laughs> no, All right. No eye contact. You don't want to get too attached. Mm-hmm. And you will. Hi, Ross. Yeah. Hi. Hi, howdy, Zach. Howdy, howdy, hey, Ross. Uh, hi, Joe. Hey, everybody. Luke, We're joined Tom. by Ross <laughs> Payton from RPPR. Role playing public radio. Role playing public radio. <laughs> Hi, thanks. And he's gonna run. <laughs> yeah, he, he's gonna run a scenario for us from Delta Green. That when I first got into Delta Green, I was so stoked on one of the initial reviews of the scenario that I decided I will not read any further into this because I want to play in it one day. And this is that day. Uh, yeah, this is a scenario. It's called Night Floors. This is originally published in Delta Green Countdown. Uh, it was written by Dennis Detwiller. And uh, thanks, Dennis. Yeah. It is now available as a free PDF on the Arc Dream website, but uh, I have the original version, so we I even made some uh, handouts for y'all. So. Ooh, Ooh, hell yeah. yeah. If you find them. Well, uh, we won't. <laughs> to uh, recall what we were talking about earlier, I think one of the first scenarios that we ran uh, was written by this man right here. Ross Payton wrote Burner, which is a shotgun scenario, and Thomas and I have had the pleasure of being players in that game, and I've run it a couple times since, and it's one of the best shotgun scenarios Aww. that exists for Delta Green. Uh, yeah, it was the first Delta Green game I ever played, and it I instantly fell in love with the game. Um, it's a really cool scenario and introduction to the world. Uh, you hear that, all me. you people who didn't vote for my scenario that year. <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, we... <laughs> uh, Not that I'm bitter. The $600, the, the $600 a month we make is... All due to you, basically. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can just pay me after the episode. <laughs> the invoice might look a yeah, little the royal, short. Yeah, the royalty tra- uh, payments. Yeah, we'll uh, see. How There's that a lot of out. overhead. <laughs> uh, yeah, we have to buy new mics every Using week. Hollywood we don't County. use the same mic twice. <laughs> yeah, the government sees that we make no profit. Yep. Right. Well, I mean, you just all we spend don't. it we on don't. expenses. We don't. You know, beer is an expense. So. Beer is an exactly. expense. Yeah, if you drink it during the show, beer it's an, an expense. expense. Beer is beer is an expense. <laughs> Write it That's off. That's why I, you know, do the mix six. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah check the, out the mix six podcast. In the trap. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the mix six. Uh, so uh, we should probably get into the adventure itself. I yeah, bet. Let's do it. Yeah. 
So uh, all of you are FBI agents. Uh, we're working for the FBI in uh, New York City, uh, where this adventure takes place. We'll say it takes place in the here and now. Uh, when this adventure was originally written, it was set in the here and now, 2001. But, you know, I can change numbers, you know. <laughs> it's huge. Boy, it's yeah. so hard. When something happened seven years ago in the scenario, I can just say that happened seven, you know, in 2012 instead of 1994. Because this was originally written in 2001. So, so that was quick the, math, man. We can yeah. go to the Twin Towers, right? Uh, yeah, you could. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't think that will come up unless you... <laughs> I mean, sure. <laughs> we got to get a better view really, of things. Unless you really want to suck. <laughs> There's only been one terrorist attack on uh, the Twin Towers at this point. In yeah, time. the uh, the truck bomb. The 93 bomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fer- fertilizer, baby. So uh, all of you are also members of what you know as the program, which is a covert interagency task force devoted to uh, combating uh, threats that should not be made public. Uh, this is not prosecution. This is not about meeting arrest quotas or anything or prosecutions or anything like that like that it means eliminating certain threats whatever they may be now uh none of your characters i know are veterans you're not using that optional rule so none of you have so far encountered anything that would defy the laws of nature as you know them but uh you you, there have been hints and rumors that you're going to see some shit in the program but you're all willing to take this measure because the people above you say it's very important And so all of you have been activated for your first mission uh, for the program, which is basically joining uh, an FBI investigation into an interstate kidnapping. But your real mission is to find uh, what they call a vector and eliminate it. The vector in this case is an occult symbol, uh, which you have been told is the yellow sign, uh, which was found in the victim's apartment. And it was also found in season one of True Detective. The Yellow King. (laughs) Uh, does not exist in the Delta Green universe. Uh, <laughs> they do not have any information about the symbol aside from that it is a known vector for uh, contagion, although they don't ex- exactly explain much. Uh, they say you just need to find out what happened to the victim, uh, a woman named Abigail Wright. But before we get into the briefing too much, uh, let's introduce the character. So, Zach? My name is Budley <laughs> Budley Dodich. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> My name is Dudley Bowditch. Dudley was once asked to leave the set of the television show Next because his three facts about himself were too long. And those three (laughs) facts are as follows. One, my dad is David Bowditch, who is the deputy director of the FBI. Number two, Dudley fully believes that wearing two or more patterns with enough confidence is completely fine in one outfit. So that, like Luke that Gintzman. is, if you can do it. <laughs> exactly. And number three, uh, Dudley completely believes that the population should be managed in order for everyone to live their hashtag best life <laughs> uh, managed it's yeah it's a, he he's currently he doesn't consider it eugenics he's the working title is eugenics because he thinks that eugene levy should choose <laughs> who lives and who dies fuck i'm fine with that system <laughs> <laughs> very good uh next up we have joe who is playing hey uh this is walter sharp i've been uh working this your job for a long long time and uh I'm ready to get out of it. Uh, my retirement's coming up, and I just want to get this over with. Very good. Uh, next up, we have Luke, who is playing... I'm playing Larold Young. I'm a 41-year-old crisis negotiator for the NYPD, working with the FBI. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Very good. And then finally, we have Thomas. Uh, Lou Gord. I also work with the NYPD, consulting for the FBI. Studied criminal justice at SUNY Albany. Uh, I'm 45 years old. Uh, ah, uh, I just, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm just here to do a job. Uh, Larold and, and, uh, yeah, Larold is, is my partner. Uh, we're the two best, uh, crisis negotiators in the NYPD. So you have been told, uh, that, uh, Abigail Wright is missing. Uh, when the police searched her apartment and took photos, obviously of it, uh, one of the photos was of a, uh, page with the yellow sign on it. This was eventually detected that, noticed by delta green analysts who or program analysts as you wouldn't probably wouldn't even have heard the phrase delta green at this point they flagged it as you know a vector and so you have been uh, put in on this investigation which is not a high priority and so they're you can just you just all volunteered for it and you're like and the fbi is more than happy to 
throw you at it uh, because nobody else, it's not a glamorous case. Essentially, Abigail Wright is an artist uh, who lives in New York City. On June 4th, she was reported missing by her father, you know, by the NYPD. Um, on June 5th, the NYPD investigated the scene at her uh, apartment building, the McAllister. Uh, they interviewed the other people uh, in the apartment building and were unable to find any other leads. Now, this is, became a federal case on August 4th because her credit card uh, was used to purchase a pack of cigarettes in Maryland. So now it's interstate. And uh, on August 6th, the FBI began investigating the case. And uh, there is no obvious leads in Maryland gas station attendant didn't remember anything the cameras weren't working that night and so it is now august 10th you have been called in uh to continue to continue to catalog her apartment which is complicated uh it is, is her apartment in new york city yes uh, this is uh, in the McAllister, a three-story uh apartment building which i will explain in a little bit but uh delta green is of course very your real mission is to find out why there was a yellow sign in her room in her apartment and to see if there's any possible spread of the symbol or any other things going on uh they have no other information to give you anybody with human can make a check because your uh, contact for delta green is agent marcus uh he has only contacted you through email uh pass 25 okay. i got a 69 pass oh did you really <laughs> yep <laughs> all right yeah and we're using the pretending to be people house rule that Woo! 69s are a critical success yeah. great <laughs> success so from the terse emails you've gotten from agent marcus uh who you don't know what his real name is program is very covert you get the sense that this is not maybe an entirely legal program or the kind of legal that, you know, secret military tribunals are legal. So, uh, you... <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Yeah, this is, uh, if you get caught, they, this is, you're a potentially a deniable asset. So, Agent Marcus has told you you don't need, you, there's no further information available. You get a sense maybe he thinks that, with especially with the 69, that maybe he thinks that it's better off that you don't know. Um, okay. And that just finding whatever the source is, wherever, what, wherever she learned where the symbol, what the symbol was... Uh, and then destroy it. And where where was the symbol found? In her apartment on a piece of paper. Okay. So uh, her apartment is, uh, like I said, in the McAllister building. It's a three-story brownstone uh, in a nice neighborhood in uh, New York City. It has a sort of faux castle facade. It looks quite nice. And yeah, there's not that many, Apparently, according to the police notes, there aren't that many tenants in it, which is sort of unusual given New York's. It would be right. a very popular place, but uh, you can investigate numerous leads uh, as you have her apartment. You also have the other people in her building. You could go to Maryland. You could attempt to research the yellow sign itself. You have not been given instructions not to instruct it, and you have a great deal of latitude in how you pursue this case. But uh, judging from her apartment, it is, well, it shows signs of uh, mental degeneration, sort of. Uh, the walls and ceilings are covered in layers of materials, papers, small items, and larger things, epoxied in a bizarre and seemingly meaningful pattern of strata. Police were unable to remove them. Judging from it looks like, given the amount of epoxy used, you would have to rip out the walls. Uh, in order to get rid of some of this stuff. Most of the items have been taken, uh, very little has been taken by the police. So far, only three radios, a transistor radio, a small tape player, and a CD Walkman have been wrenched from the walls. Huh. One leaving behind a chunk of plastic from the case. Uh, the floor is bare. The rug has been ripped up and taken away, revealing a battered and stained linoleum surface. There is no furniture. Some of her possessions, uh, such as her TV uh, and a VCR, oddly enough, had uh, serial numbers registered with her uh, insurance company, but none of them have turned up in uh, area pawn shops or police seizures. So, was there a CD in the CD player? Yes, it was unlabeled. Ooh. Have we all convened at this location? Yeah, essentially all of you got emails from Agent Marcus telling you you've been in cordially invited to a night at the opera, <laughs> which you know is your activation for this uh, for the program, and you know this is some serious so shit. So we're thinking that we're here for like a murder mystery party? Well, it's a, <laughs> right now it's, <laughs> right now it's a uh, missing person. That's how uh, I yeah. like to think of every case. Yeah. It, uh, it helps me separate myself from the, the yeah, I just have some fun. details. I love missing persons parties. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Walter shows up favorite. in costume with a cape. <laughs> oh, a fake oh, mustache. It's, it's an investigation. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> um, 
some really unless you have more uh, to go. Those uh, that's just from looking at the initial case file. I mean, there's more details, obviously, but if you ask me, I can provide more information. Are there pictures of the walls? Yeah, yeah, that's what you saw. The the stuff that was epoxied on. Yeah. Okay, so I desperately, Dudley would want to study that to see if there's any patterns. Well, you can actually go to the uh, apartment while I'm standing there. I want to study it and see if there's any patterns. <laughs> you're just sure. lo- looking. You're in the apartment looking at pictures of what you could just look at <laughs> anyway. But that is 100 percent correct. That's how Dudley does it. Dudley is also making <laughs> sure to not step on anything. He's being very careful, and okay, so he's you're, you're disgusted. You're heading to the building, right? Absolutely. Now. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm doing that too. And Dudley, you're heading. I think there? I think he and I are partners. When right? we roll up together, I look over at my partner Walter. Program, huh? As, I, yeah. <laughs> Boy, you're one for words today. I just want to get this done. Are you not interested in seeing, like, what happens? Like, we're trying to find this vector. I don't understand why you're not more excited. Every case is the same case, kid. You uh, <laughs> you go up there, you find the things you need to find, and you leave. Working with a bona fide wordsmith over here. My southern drawl coming <laughs> in. As this conversation is going on, uh, you hear the doorbell ring. I'm at the door of the apartment. I'm just hitting the doorbell over and over again because uh, I don't want to be rude and just barge in. I'm just staring at the pictures. I'm not going to get the door. I'll go get the door. Okay. Everyone actually give me your starting sanities, too. Uh, so for this game, I am going to be making your sanity score rolls for you. Oh, fun. Oh, type. So I'll just tell you what how you react to certain things. I am at 40. Breaking point at 30. Breaking point of 30. Okay. Um, did you take a veteran option? Like, if I, your power... No. Uh, okay. I don't think any none of, of us None did. of us took the veteran option. Isn't your starting sanity power times five? or Starting sanity or is power times five. Starting breaking point is power times four. So shouldn't, you, shouldn't your starting sanity oh. be 50? 50. Yeah. Oh, I was looking at my breaking point. So I'm 50, breaking point at 40. Okay, yeah. You, if you want to take off 10 points off the top, just... <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> like, we can I I just recently uh, Zach taught me how to read, okay. so I'm still <laughs> good, good job. still figuring this whole thing um, out. <laughs> Walter, what's your start? Uh, I start at sixty mm-hmm. and uh, breaking point at forty eight. Okay, and Dudley Dudley's sanity starts at forty five with the breaking point at thirty six. Nice, uh, Lou uh, also forty five and thirty six. Ooh, okay, twinsies, strong. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> All right, so you're looking We're at that. We're sane as fuck. Yeah. All right, so you're 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 working at that. Uh, you walk in. Uh, I assume you're with your partner, Lou. Lou, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so you're all there. Uh, one of the you actually find uh, there were some scattered papers you didn't notice in the photos originally. Uh, so there, you bend down to pick them up and look at them, and you actually see like a page from a script of like a play or a movie script. I got a motherfucking handout. Yeah. I read it out loud immediately. All right. Scene, the smoking lounge, a large... Actually, I read it in Dudley's voice, not Zach's. (laughs) Scene, the smoking lounge, a large parlor on the fourth floor. In the room are the dog, Thomas, and Michelle. Enter Mark Rourke. Mark, Abigail is gone. She moved upstairs today. Thomas. And? Mark. I miss the kid. Michelle. Her dad, that pig, came around. She doesn't like you, Mark. No one likes you. Anyway, she ran off with that salesman. Everyone knows it. Mark. Fuck you, you cunt. Thomas. Come on, guys. Come on. The dog barks. Someone is heard coming up the steps, a loud racket reverberating up and down the staircase. Mark. Who is that? Everyone stops to listen. Michelle. Who could be down there? Who is that? Mark steps to the doorway and leans to look down the stairs. Mark. Hello? Hello? Enter FBI agents. Abigail was a an artist, you said? Yeah. Could we glean that this is something that she has written? Well, you know, she was a su- successful commercial illustrator uh, and fine oh, artist. Okay. She had no background in play or script writing. Okay. I mean, that's not to say she couldn't do that, but... But that's not... But her name's in it. Right. The, her uh, name is in it, yeah. The yellow sign, was it a piece of paper free floating in the room, or was it mm-hmm. part of the walls? It was uh, also a piece of paper on the uh, floor. Is it still here? Uh, no, that was taken initially by the FBI, or by the uh, local police. They did bag some evidence and take it. The play, they, they said Abigail's moved downstairs? Upstairs. Upstairs. Are we on the like second floor of this 
apartment building or yeah it's a three-story building i will hand this out in a second because this is she is on the ground floor so you're okay. on uh three stories she is uh here is a map of the place and abigail's is right there on the ground floor so i think we need to visit some of the neighbors see if any of them have a dog Look at that real quick. oh yeah on this convenient map of the building that the, su- the super provided us with uh, he's got all the tenants listed here, which is kind of creepy. But Michelle, also mentioned in the play. Well, you can get, I, I would say that was part of the case file, the NYPD. Um, you're able, you get a map of the place and you can, like, the NYPD interviewed every person in the building. Because there weren't that many. Um, yeah, it's a little improv. That's yeah. fantastic. That's fantastic. <laughs> Gonna love working with you guys. Yep. <laughs> you said there's three stories to this apartment mm-hmm. building? Yeah. Uh, so, this says there's, there's, yeah, it starts... At a parlor on the fourth floor. Is there access to the roof on this building? Sure. You can go up there. I mentioned that out loud to... Have we have we met before? Uh, I would say you all work in the same FBI field office in New York City, so you would all have met each other at briefings for larger cases and that kind of thing. Uh, whether you know each other better than that, uh, I'll leave up to you. Obviously, each the partners know each other quite well. Right. So uh, whether each set of partners owes the other set of partners. Both of them slept with my wife. I hate them both <laughs> deeply. <laughs> you asked us to do that, so <laughs> I thought I would enjoy it. <laughs> um, well, so I, I uh, as I am uh, thinking about the parlor in the play, uh, I do want to go... I want to listen to what is on the CD. Okay, the well, the CD, CD on the wall doesn't work. It's not... Oh, it's on the wall? Yeah, it's epoxy oh, okay. to the wall. Like, okay. you can open it up and get the CD out of it, but you'll have to uh, either rip the CD player out of the wall to plug it in or find another CD player. We both drive uh, sensible late model vehicles that include five CD changes. I go to my burgundy Oldsmobile, okay. and I pop that CD. Yeah, in. it's a company. It's, you know, a FBI car, yeah. So, um... It plays a 1930s song. The hook seems to be this woman singing, uh, Whatever Happened to Abby? I'd like to Shazam the song. I look into my back seat and I'm spooked that you're in there listening to it. With me. <laughs> <laughs> to, yeah, Shazam that song while it's playing. Okay. Uh, as a song from 1938, uh, Whatever Happened to Abby by uh, a group you haven't heard of, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Oh, here it is, by Phil Hart and the Hart Heps. As you're listening to it, Shazam sort of glitches for a second and then registers that. So your phone seems to freeze for a second, and then it just shows that information. I smack it a couple times. You got to upgrade to that new... uh... I know. (laughs) I know. I know I got to upgrade. It'll take hours to search through all of the stuff in the apartment, like especially if you're trying to like chisel some of the stuff out of the epoxy on the walls. Uh, and look through all these other papers that the police apparently missed. Uh, so, uh, Dudley, you were wanting to do that? Absolutely. Okay, so that'll take you a couple hours to do. We'll say this is like 10 a.m., so something like that. Um, Walter? I, I would like to look through the scattered papers, but uh, Walter is doing it kind of half acidly. Okay, <laughs> so you're both in the apartment doing that. Yeah. All right. Um, I am going to go uh, try to find a uh, like ladder up to the rooftop and yeah. see if there's anything up there. Uh, the map does show roof access on the third floor, I believe. Can I take a peek at that? It says that, and we go yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the two of you head up there. Um, no there... need to double check. <laughs> <laughs> it's there. Thomas is like, let us do it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Uh, yeah, it's actually unlocked, so you can get up to the roof. What do I see when I get up? About what you would expect. A, a roof. This building is clearly pretty old, you know. Um, you're not an expert on art, unless any of you have architecture as a skill or no. anything like that. Uh, but uh, you're, yeah, you're, I, I actually put a hundred percent in my craft is architecture. <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> no, I'm looking at a sheet. It's yeah, right it's here. right here. Uh, I mean, the building looks old, uh, but it appears to be in good condition. So no, no signs of a parlor up here, Laro. Yeah, no. when I get up to the rooftop, just empty. You can give me search checks. Yeah, if you have search. I fail my search roll. Okay. 72 on a 60. Uh, were you going to be searching uh, as well? Uh, yeah, I'll search. Get it, Lou. Uh, Lou closes his eyes and lays down on the ground. <laughs> He's like, I'm not looking. <laughs> now he closes his eyes and lays on the ground and uses his Disco Elysium skill shivers <laughs> to get in touch with the city. Ooh, fail. Okay. 61 on a 40. Yeah, there's... You smell 
something bad uh, up there, but you can't really identify what it is. Well, it's, yeah, August August in the city. Yeah. The garbage starts piling up. I want to just, like, take it's, a walk. It's really a, a wonder yeah. anybody lives in New York City because yeah. it's a fucking huge trash hole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lerald takes a big breath in and he goes... Classic New York. <laughs> uh, I do. I, I do want to take a, a walk around the perimeter of the uh, rooftop and and see if I can see anything out of All right. the ordinary. Um, you can give me an alertness check for that. So, two of you, both of you in the apartment, can give me search checks as well. Yeah, uh, forty-seven on a sixty, so I pass. Okay. I. Uh... <laughs> critically fail a 100 all right well i was i said half acidly and the dice backed it up <laughs> all right i rolled a 70 on a 70 okay uh you actually do get uh something you after handouts. you're digging around for a while i um, love handouts <laughs> you find uh this it's a receipt uh, for rent for eight fifty. Where do I find this? Uh, you find this in the paper. It'll actually sort of tucked mm-hmm. between the floorboards. Like it fell off. I was like, that's suspicious. But then I remembered it's written in 2001. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dudley is very particular with the way he handles everything. He's got his gloves on. But even with the gloves on, he's still like finger tipping everything. Visibly grossed out by everything in this apartment. I um what you got, Dudley? I found a, a rent receipt for July rent. It's eight hundred and fifty dollars a apartment looks like S ten or five ten for Abigail Laura Wright, and it's signed July rent already paid. Interesting. For reasons, I bet. She went missing in June, right? Yes. That would be the reason that this is confusing to me. Dudley, it's because she uh, went missing in June. That's odd. Huh. So she's still here, or at least she's... Are we in S10 or 510? Uh, you're in whatever uh, apartment is labeled on the map. It is, definitely, it is definitely not the apartment you're in. That's okay. Oh, and not only did she pay rent for a month where she supposedly wasn't living here, but that would make sense because it's a different apartment. So maybe she's just in a different apartment here. I bet she's just moved rooms, didn't take any of her stuff, <laughs> and the layout of this and building, then bought cigarettes in Maryland. Uh, S10 would uh, imply an apartment in the basement. Ooh, Dudley, I think that uh, that'd be in the basement. Well, it makes sense if she moved upstairs to the basement. Then I guess we could go down there and check it out. <laughs> oh, do you think from the play that she was living in the basement and moved into the one we're in now? Perhaps. Yeah. Maybe time is backwards. I don't know. They said all this stuff was going to be crazy and weird, so may as well be backwards, time-wise. All right. Uh, so you've been searching on the roof for a while. You've been searching the apartment for a while. Yeah, on the roof line, it's, it's there's some weird bad smell. Uh, it's vaguely familiar, but you can't exactly I place can't it. I can't locate yeah. like, where it's coming from. Somewhere nearby. You don't think it's just you don't think it's just New York City's general uh, perfume, you know? Right. With that perfume in my nose, can I look? and find a signature of hers somewhere mm-hmm. else to match it with the signature on this pay receipt for the rent? Yeah. Uh, you actually do have some of her documents uh, and you do look at them and it looks the same. That is a big brain move right there. Is that <laughs> pin? The ink on it looks re- relatively recent. Um, but if anybody has forensics uh, wants to look at the receipt or... I very much do and I very much do. Okay. This is maybe Joe not understanding. Wouldn't the receipt come from... The landlord? She, oh, she, yeah, yeah. She paid well, and I the, think she signed it, didn't she? Uh, let me look there, at there's it There's a signature, but it doesn't look like Abigail something. It looks like a J. And okay, yeah. yeah. Like if it's J. not Abigail's signature, it's not her handwriting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Abigail, yeah, sorry. Gotcha. Uh, I thought you were asking if, yeah, I couldn't remember off the top of my head. Because I, I, <laughs> I gave you the handout. I can't look at it. <laughs> well, I'll edit all that out so okay. we don't sound so dumb. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, future Zach, <laughs> cut here. Yeah. The ink looks recent, uh, but if anybody makes a forensic check on it, failed. Uh, I'll do a look at it. Okay. Yeah, I, I come down from the rooftop and I'm like, oh, I pass. Lair, I also pass. I, I fail. Lair, Lou. Okay, well, you only need one pass. Look and, at this receipt. Uh, the style of receipt is, you know, archaic. It's over. It's a design that's over 50 years old. Paper is quite old as well. I'm telling you, time's backwards. In fact, it has not been printed uh, for at least 50 years. That I look at it. I look at my two FBI agents, and I'm like, S- S10? Yeah, we figure it's the basement. We should probably go down there. Okay. Yeah, I'll go. 
All right, so you head to the basement. It is unlocked, and uh, but you do find four rooms in there. Uh, each of them is clearly being used for storage. And they're all being directed by a different director, uh, the last one being Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> yeah, uh, four rooms. But Tim Roth is yeah. in all of them. <laughs> Antonio Banderas uh, yeah, is you, in, you, in one of them. You can see art supplies stored there. Are there and, uh, are there uh, like numbers on the doors that mm-hmm. lead into these? Uh, yeah, S ten is a storage room. Oh, okay, okay. It looks quite dusty in there. Like so, what? It, this yeah, is the kind of let's like, see what you store in it's, there. I think it's uh, the sort of storage rooms that has like sort of cages so you can see in, even though you mm-hmm. don't have oh, you can't creepy. Get, uh, they each of the doors is locked, so you can't. So get what? Into like it. looking through the cages, like what sort of stuff is being stored in? I here? mean, boxes in one. You can see canvases uh, and like tackle boxes with like paint stains on them, and uh, so you would guess art supplies. Uh, but most of them are cardboard boxes. Uh, there's a bicycle. Yeah. Are we able to get into these? Uh, the doors are cages? all locked. I, I want to ask like the uh, the superintendent for a key. Have we talked to him? You have not talked to anybody with a connection to the building yet. So, I pull my gun out and I put it to his head and I say, "Give me the key." <laughs> to Lou? <laughs> yeah, to Lou. <laughs> and Lou just rolls his fucking eyes and he's like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm we're on it, um, dude. We're I going don't, to the super. I don't do that, but uh, yeah, let's. Uh, I assume we have the superintendent's phone number. All right, so the phone rings. There's no answer. Bring, 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 bring. Put it on speaker. Leave a message as a group. Uh, there's no answering machine either. It just rings. Oh. Oh. Um, Foiled. When you're looking at the case files, looking at it, you also see the building is owned by a company called Art Life, uh, in all caps. Uh, so Art Life. Art Life. Yes. Do we know how long she's been in this apartment? Like you live in her uh, life? years. Uh, okay. There is when you uh, the NYPD did their investigation. They did look up to see if she's been involved in any other cases. Uh, she reported being mugged back in 2012, which was unsolved. How old is she? Uh, she is in her early 30s. Uh, he said is. She's still alive. Uh, Hell yeah. <laughs> I'd say gotcha. yeah. Uh, 34. 34. Okay. Can I search to see if there's any, uh, like, weak spots or, like, messed up chains in this cage that I can try to fit uh, through? If you have criminology, you could you would know techniques burglars use to break into things like this, and then you could apply those techniques to break into that place. That is a 19 on a 60. Okay. Yeah, you you can successfully jimmy the lock uh, of them, so uh, they are not super well secured. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, I Lerald, uh, Lerald walks up to it. He turns the uh, doorknob on this, and it's just they had left it unlocked. Mm-hmm. That's true criminology right <laughs> <Yeah>. there. <laughs> I'm like, they say most break-ins yeah. are opportunity break-ins. Right, exactly. Uh, so, yeah, I, uh, I want to... Uh, I look mean, going through all these boxes will take out. I mean, just you can casually look around, sure. I want to just go up to the first box that I see and see what's inside of it. Okay. Papers. Uh, you look through them. You can see it's a manuscript of some kind. On the title, it says Return to Night Sea. Night Sea is one word. And the... Uh, can you spell that? Uh, night C, like gotcha. uh, the letter C, or uh, no, it's like, like, like an ocean. Yeah, like, okay, like a synonym for ocean. S E S E A. If I read like a page or two of it, does it seem uh, uh, it similar is... to the writing of the? No, it's uh... very different. This is okay. a science fiction novel. It appears to be. Uh, there is the name Roger Caroon uh, on it by Roger Caroon. If any of your characters would be uh, sci-fi fans, they could just make an uh, intelligence times five check to recognize that name. Lou. Oh, shit. Yeah, okay. I pass. Uh, right. 67 yeah. on a 7. Roger Kroon has a successful uh, sci-fi novel series called Night Sea. Uh, this is the manuscript or a draft of one of the books. Mm. Um, you look through them. You oh, all, shit, However, guys. there is a scrap of paper there that also looks like a play, and it just says, Phantom of Truth enters the palace. Mysterious. Guys, uh, Roger this, is, this is the Roger Kroon. Uh, the, tech, the font on both the samples look different. They were not written or printed. You know, they were not using the same font. When I was looking at uh, the uh, layout of this uh, apartment building, Roger Caroon lives in this apartment building. Yeah, this building. is his... You broke into a storage room. <laughs> right. So, yeah, that's that's why uh, his if I here. If I go to, like... If I <laughs> but go, there is a piece of this weird... Yeah, a play. That, yeah, if I go to, like, the next box over, is it still Roger's stuff? No. Uh, Wait, who is Roger Caroon? Roger Caroon is the fucking author of Night Sea. 
Nazi. What's Nazi? Nazi. Oh, okay. Okay, just say it over and over again. Nazi. Nazi? Oh my God! This again? No. Uh, how it's many a terrible times? Terrible time to be. How a many Nazi? times is Karun gonna have to face that accusation? You know, <laughs> that Nazi sounds like Nazi. It's not. It's Nazi. Uh, you'd have to make another criminology check to break it into another storage room. Well, uh, yeah, I'll do another criminology. Try to get into uh, what I would assume would be S nine. I'm gonna try to get into one of the other ones, and I succeed. Thirty six on a fifty. Okay. Uh, you see, this is the one with the art supplies. There's canvases. They are signed Thomas Manuel. What was that name? Uh, Thomas Manuel. Also a tenant in the apartment. Mm-hmm. And also a name from the play. Right, yeah. We've got Thomas and Michelle to talk to uh, in this building. Uh, he, these are sort of fine art paintings. They're very abstract. You don't know, none of, I assume none of you are up to date on contemporary art. Zero so. percent. Yeah, they, it is uh, rather meaningless to you. Yeah, my craft is actually 100% in art as well. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just a renaissance man here. <laughs> <laughs> Architecture, art. Time is backwards. Yeah. So S10 was Roger's... Uh, Roger Kearns, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Where's that receipt at? Oh, I ate it. I'm sorry. Lou loves paper. Like an old dog. Can I do like what? a, a <laughs> alertness or, or a search roll to see um, was other than like storage dog. units down here? Are there any? Yeah, I doors? mean, yeah, you, you could search for hidden doors. I guess. Yeah, I sure. do. I want to do that. All right, uh, that'll take some time. Uh, is anybody going to assist? Yeah, I rolled a one on a sixty. So um, you find some gray hairs. Nice. They do not look. Anybody? Does anybody have forensics over forty percent? I do. Uh, yes. They look like animal hairs. The dog. Thomas has the dog. We know that now. But it takes you time to search through this, all of this, uh, to get through the entire basement a few hours, so... Let's move that timeline! <laughs> all right, so you were all in the basement, and you just found some gray dog hairs. And actually, Dudley, as you've been you know, working through this, uh, uh, searching through the b- basement, you get the sense several times that someone's watching you. But every Dudley time you look around, I always like... feel like... You can give me an alertness check. I would absolutely love that. I have a 70 alertness, and I rolled a 36. Okay, you don't see anything. Walter. Yes, Dudley? Have you know you you haven't been helping look for anything. Have you noticed that anyone is around that's not the four of us? Uh, I haven't seen oh, it. Was, it was Walter. <laughs> 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 I've been standing in that shadow over there. Yeah, Walter, I, while I, you're standing in that a shadow, more have you position. just been staring into the back of my head? Because I just feel like somebody's watching me. From time to time, I've done that, yes. Okay. Can I do an alertness roll to see if I've seen anything? Sure. I pass a 67 on a 70. You think you saw something, but the shadows leading up the stairs to the first floor are like move a little bit and it get like something moved in front of the light source just for a split second earlier i was looking over toward the stairs and i thought i saw a shadow or something but that, that's the only thing i've seen but yeah you, you actually do feel like someone was watching you too now you mention it though i feel like i've been seen well i always try to make you feel like that walter but i didn't mean it in such a spooky shadowy sense i didn't mean it like that god damn it i just want you to feel vulnerable and willing <laughs> to impart any wisdoms you have on me can i search around for any like hidden cameras uh over here in this conversation yeah sure go one. Oh, there are no hidden cameras <laughs> well there's no hidden cameras oh wait that's not Lou. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, dive into me. Hold on. Uh, Lou, SUNY Albany. All right. Yeah, listen, uh, after a careful inspection, there's no hidden cameras in this room. So, but you, Actually, you do see uh, something. There is like a crack in the wall, and uh, you it just it would have been perfectly at eye level. There's something like a crack in the wall at perfect eye level. Is though. it like a hole in the wall where the boys can see it all? Do you think there are boys on the other side who are watching us? I mean... I'd like to watch the Watchmen. It's, it's just dark in there. Like you shine your flashlight through, you can't see anything. Does it go to one of the other storage rooms? No, or? it's like in one of the outer walls of the building. Oh, so no. it leads to the outside. Mm, well, like it would be. And this is underground. This is all the basement. So it lead, you would guess to the sewers or something. You have no. You you don't know what would be outside this wall of the building. Cool. Right, Lou. Yeah. What should we do about this hole? Well, a, as there, it's just a crack. Like, as they're talking, um, Lerald is looking at the dog hairs mm-hmm. in his hand. He pulls out his FBI Swiss Army knife and blows on the dog whistle that is uh, on on that. Uh, sure. Um, give me an alertness check. Let's kill him. I That's fail. What a cop would do. 
Nothing happens? Cool. Yeah, I forgot how to blow into a whistle. No, I mean, <laughs> it's a dog whistle. You don't hear anything, obviously, but right. you don't get it. If there was a dog There's nearby. No, no response. I do love the idea that it's the dog watching us, though. Yeah. That's a great train of thought. <laughs> um, yeah. We know the dog. We think the dog is Thomas's, right? We found the fur in Thomas's uh, storage unit. Uh, no, this was actually outside of the, the storage room. It was just like in, in You were the, searching the basement for hidden doors. And right. So yeah. this was in just the general yeah, area like in the of hallway. the basement? Okay. okay. Yeah. I blow on the dog whistle, listen for any response. Nothing you Nothing not, comes not from it. in the basement. You fuck up and you make it audible. Yeah. Like, yeah. humans <laughs> can hear it. So you Laryl, have... I think that's a fantastic idea. Keep that idea on you as we go through the rest of this building, okay? Um, Thank yeah, you. So you have the tenants. You could talk to the people at Art Life. The super is not answering his phone. But you, um, yeah, you can investigate the neighborhood itself. Well, or... if, if I go over to where the, like, crack in the wall is, if I, like, apply some, like, pressure onto no, it, no. it doesn't budge It's or just, anything. like... When the bricks should be perfectly level with each other, it's just a, a gap big enough that you could look through it. But when you shine your light through it, you can't see anything. So, And I'll, I'll roll for this if I need to or whatever, like bureaucracy. But I'd like to call somebody back at the office and get them looking at like maps of the subway, maps of the sewers. Give me a bureaucracy check. 28 on a 60. Okay. Uh, you are so are you handing this as a normal FBI thing or like through the program? If I know of someone through the program, I'd do that. But basically, well, you, to do through the program, you'd route it through Agent Marcus through an email. He, okay. Uh, Agent Marcus insisted that all communications be electronic. He does not want to meet face to face, but you can make requests through him, or you can do it legitimately. If you have to do it legitimately, you would have access to more resources, but you would have to justify it somehow. Like you think maybe she was abducted through someone going through the subway. Uh, or using some access to the subway. But the program, it could be anything, and he's not going to give a shit. He will either fulfill it or he won't. Lou, I don't know what you're thinking, but I think it would be very easy for us to give some sort of bullshit reason to get these You made plans. your bureaucracy check, so you could justify it. Yeah, I think I that's just... Not a, that's not like... But if you're like, I want a flamethrower. Why do you want a <laughs> yeah. flamethrower? That's a weird request. Exactly. It's, yeah, it's cold I, in here. <laughs> I, I'm going to just say this is pertinent to a number of my investigations. and um, uh, They'll get back to you. It'll take a day or so. Okay. Does Agent Marcus, does he sign his emails? Agent Marcus, I mean, just as M. Yeah. Okay. Like in this like crack or whatever, can I feel around and see if I find, you know, anything that has been placed in there? Like a yeah, Actually, note? yeah. So you stick your, your, your finger in there and you actually do touch on something. Um, it feels kind of, do you just papery uh, a little bit? Can I try to yeah. fish it out of there? Uh, it's a cigar, like a smoked cigar. Like just the mm -hmm. nub of it? Yeah. Or... Mm -hmm. Through removing the cigar, do we see more through the hole? Uh, you shine your light. Uh, again, you just see darkness. I want to uh, kind of break the cigar open and see if there's anything inside of it. Nope. No? Um, it... Tobacco. Did you say it was smoked? Yeah, it was smoked. I'm going to pull out a Ziploc bag out of my back pocket, put yeah, the cigar in there. You'd have evidence bags. Yeah, I'm going to throw in an evidence bag. Just and, a Ziploc. Uh, no, yeah, it's just a Ziploc bag. <laughs> it housed a sandwich earlier, but I've eaten that already. <laughs> um, but, uh, I threw the cigar in there, uh, and then... Actually, if somebody had a bureaucracy check, you could get a... Um, a I turkey forget. smoked the cigar. As FBI agents, you would have access to like uh, some surveillance equipment, including like those uh, cameras they can use to snake under doors. Okay, well, I rolled, a, fit in that I rolled a 56 on a 60, so as I, I, I put the cigar into an evidence bag, I put it away, and then I pull out my Swiss Army knife and use the little camera that's on it, and I well, stick it in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have the camera with you. You have to go back to your office and get it. So that'll take you a couple hours to do. I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm okay. going to take the evidence bag with the cigar in it, and sure. I'm going to have them run it for like any DNA that's on the sure. cigar mm -hmm. and and pick up the camera. Laryl goes to do that. Uh, Bye, Laryl. You say you have one car Peace left at the building. Um, okay. So what are you guys going to do in the meantime? It is early afternoon at this point. Well, we've got everyone in the apartment still to talk to. Mm -hmm. Laryl, do you want to take this be right before you leave? So sorry right. to catch you right before you left the door. However, I think it would be pertinent to also have them sweep this for prints. And he pulls out the receipt uh, from earlier, the rent receipt. Good idea. Yeah, I'll throw that into another evidence bag. 
give it to the dumb one who won't look into the fact that he uh, that she paid rent a month after she was here. Right. Okay, you know that so, stupid ass Derek who oh, works there. Oh, freaking Derek. Yeah, dude. give it to him. So I'll yeah I'll take that receipt. I also want to pop the uh, CD out of my mm-hmm. car, put that in an evidence bag, it's and not have. There. <laughs> oh, 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 did I? D- does my car have any signs um, of a break in? When you, you, when you, no, it doesn't. But uh, when you, when you look around, you uh, feel it's in your coat pocket, like your your jacket pocket. You don't remember putting it there. Okay, interesting. Okay, so I'll I'll carefully take it by the sides, put that in an evidence bag, and have them run all of those things. I, I <laughs> case of the haunted CDR. <laughs> so I, I, uh, Laryl brushes that off as like a huh. Classic Laryl. Just I forgot that I popped it out of my CD player. Classic Is there anything in the CD player? No. I turn on NPR and I drive to the station. Okay. Walter, you've been doing this a whole long time. I wonder if there's any sort of order of operations, like please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, that you would use in a situation like this. I'm just trying to garner as much wisdom uh, from as, you as, as you drive down. NPR is doing a piece on the uh, recent revival of Edwardian uh, architecture and styles. Nice. Is this uh, brownstone building Edwardian? Uh, yes. Actually. I I know that I have a hundred percent in architecture, but I am unfamiliar <laughs> with. Uh, <laughs> With Edwardian architecture, what, uh, yeah, what do you learn? Could give us a uh, yeah. What what do I learn from this NPR article? Uh, Edwardian style was uh, you know the 1890s to sort of the 1920s. It is. Uh, I mean, it goes in. I'm not going to like give you the Wikipedia on it, but uh, it actually mentions uh, there are many buildings in New York with this style, uh, including the McAllister Building. Uh, which is known to be a uh, owned by a company called Art Life, uh, which houses it, uh, gives cheap rent to artists in the hope that their work will then be profitable. So, would he learn from that if Art Life takes a cut after the artist becomes uh, popular? Yeah, essentially. Okay, it's an incubator. Oh, we should start yeah. with this. <laughs> an incubator. Yeah. Well, you just need a fucking three <laughs> sound for a three store. Do you have ten million dollars? You have a couple million bucks to buy a brownstone in New York? Yeah. yeah. No, no. We st- we just buy a shitty home in like uh, West Springfield and throw yeah, a bunch really of podcasters get great, in there. Yeah, you're really gonna get world class artists. Yeah, the, uh, the it's not it's the just battlefield about, uh, incubator. Mm-hmm. It's just about it's a numbers um, game. So which art? Which uh, so th- the remaining three agents uh, who are at the uh, building? Which one, which tenant do you want to talk to first? Dudley, I was thinking uh, we saw that receipt. She was paying for that storage unit that turned out to be uh, Roger Caroon. Roger Caroon. I think that's our first stop. Okay. Roger Caroon. So you knock on the door. Uh, that's it. Roger answers. Uh, Lou, you recognize him from his photo. He is a unassuming, you know, man who is wearing a sweater. Apartment is quite frigid. And he his hair is askew. The sweater doesn't match his pants. Uh, his loafers are quite dirty and scuffed. You can see behind him his apartment is quite messy. He has a very old-looking computer that is uh, turned off. But he's like, yes, hello? Seeing that mess, Dudley takes a step back because he doesn't want to talk to this guy. Mr. Uh, Caroon? Uh, yes. Hey, we, uh, we're at the FBI. We have a few questions for you. Oh, my. Is this about uh, Abigail? It is, as a matter of fact. Yeah, the uh, police were here uh, a few months ago, I guess. Uh, she, yeah, I'm a uh, terrible business. I, I don't know what happened to her. That's what we're trying to find out. Do you? Uh, what was the last time you saw her? Oh, I would say it was... Must have been late May or early June before she went missing. Uh, I see her. Uh, I, I saw her uh, as she uh, was, you know, a tenant here. She was quite, quite a good illustrator, quite a good uh, artist. Can I make a human check on whether I see her was a mistake versus I saw her? Sure. I rolled a twenty-nine on a sixty. Yeah, he seems to be sincere. I mean, he, you do not detect any sort of evasive quirks or uh, tells. I whisper in, in Walter's ear, he's on the up and up. <laughs> How would you uh, characterize your relationship with her? I mean, acquaintance? I, uh, you know, I'm a writer, not an artist, so she would get off talking about art styles and things that I, I have some familiarity with, but she was very, I don't know, it, it, adjacent worlds, but not uh, totally overlapping. Are there any other writers in the building, Mr. Carew? Uh, yes. Uh, well, sort of, I guess. Uh, Michelle uh, Van Fitz, uh, she writes but poetry, but Are there she's any... so political. Are there any playwrights? No. 
Not that I know of. Uh, it's mostly... Uh, have, have you ever dabbled in playwriting? Uh, in college, but it's been a long time. Why does that have so anything just, to do with this? Do you recognize this play? No. He looks at it as a... Oh. Huh. It mentions Abigail and FBI agents. That's odd. We thought so, too. Oh, where did you find this? Did you ever know Abigail to write, sir? Uh, no. She had me help her write the little captions for her uh, exhibits. Or the little, you know, uh, when they do a reception for a new exhibit, there's a little brochure or a little thing like, oh, here's what my work means. And I, uh, I helped her once or twice with that because she's so paralyzed with fear with writing. Hmm. Hmm. She hates writing. She don't write. Well, she didn't Damn hate it. it. She, I'm not she a just. Cop. You move outside your area of expertise and you become afraid. You you judge yourself by professional standards, but you have no background in it. You know, it's it's a perfectionist trait, like a lot of artists. She uh, was her own worst critic and afraid of her own power, seemingly. <laughs> Deadly, that's a but uh, yeah. The only other person who types is Michelle, but be yeah. Uh, anyway, anything else? I'm gathering you don't yeah, you don't like yeah. Michelle. Yeah, Michelle. How do I put this? She, uh, well, I think her her politics are not my politics. I don't I don't agree with a lot of what. What she are says. your politics? Sir? You should just talk to her. I don't want to get into it. She, if you, I say anything and you tell her, if I said something, it's I don't want to talk. Well, uh, the reason we came up here, uh, we we found a receipt here. Uh, it looks like uh, Abigail was paying for a storage unit downstairs that we believe is housing some of your items. I was wondering if you could tell me about that. I have no idea what you're talking about. I have a storage thing down there. Are you S10? S10? Yeah. Why did Abigail pay you a July rent? It, the storage room is included with my rent. I don't pay a separate thing for the storage room. How much is your rent, sir, if you uh, don't mind me asking? A thousand? I mean, that's very cheap for this neighborhood. Extremely cheap. Are you rent controlled? Or have you been here for a while? Well, Art Life. It's through the Art Life. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, art Life, of course. Even though I'm a writer, I make sure an artist in this building is the, the artist for all my covers. So what's, so, what's Art Life's big? What it's, do they get? it's complicated, but um, they've they uh, have percentages on options for some of my books. You know, in case they ever get what percent? It, it's confidential. It, it's not. It's this not is your, this it, is a federal investigation. I don't so. see how percentages for my book contracts have anything to do with <laughs> Abigail missing. It doesn't matter what you see, sir. <laughs> As relevant no, to the case. I can't disclose them. It's confidential. Well, we'll see about that when we talk to Hot Life. <laughs> I might just have to be Don't from talk. Boston a little bit <laughs> to get through this. Or to get this guy to talk. Yeah. <laughs> I really want to watch... I get the more Bostonian I get. I really want to watch The Departed now. <laughs> uh, my parents were divorced. I grew up in both towns. <laughs> any, any Anything else? Out of character, I feel like we should know more about his... I don't know... I guess he's told us all he can about his relationship to her, but she was on this script and he wasn't, so maybe he doesn't know her very well. Who else was in that script? Another Thomas, person from Michelle, the... and Mark was yeah. the other one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can look at the building and see if there's a Mark in the building. Yes. Mark is not in the and building. Dog. Been, yeah, because yeah, Mark is that. not in the building. Yeah, Thomas is in the building. Thomas Michelle, Michelle is in the building, and then there's a Lewis Post. Oh, hey. Well, you could also stop and get lunch and wait for uh, Laryl to get back with the uh, camera. It's probably best if we just continue on without Laryl. There, there's a uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm content just sitting here and listening. There's I'm a content. there's an unoccupied uh, apartment on the first floor. Mm-hmm. Can I go in there? It is locked. You could use criminology to pick the lock. I will try that. I want to try right, yeah. to pick no, that lock. That is. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Sorry about all the digging in. We have a blessed. Day. I understand you have a job to do, and I assume you do as well with art. Mm-hmm. Let's get back to it on both accounts. Mm-hmm. Okay. I pass my criminology check uh, okay. at eight on a sixty. It is an empty apartment. There is a uh, empty bottle of bourbon, or it smells like bourbon, or some pretty strong alcohol. The label has been ripped off. Uh, it's on its side. There's a few drops left, but other than that, it uh, appears to be uh, empty. It is also an old style of liquor bottle, which is not like something you would see in a current liquor, liquor store unless it was is yeah. that the only thing in the apartment mm-hmm. all right actually you can be search checks to see if you find anything you know. lou do you want to go do down search. in there and see what he's up to in this empty apartment oh i crit success a one Dude, on we've rolled, a 60 uh, we've rolled in, three ones today that never <laughs> happens <laughs> in the um dust uh you can see dog prints a large dog this pup gets around are there any uh gray hairs uh yes thanks Laryl. Uh, i i fill in are you did you come down and join me is that what you said anything in here no i was uh 
that uh, that play said something about uh, Mark was disappointed she moved upstairs. I thought maybe he was an old neighbor and used to live here or something, but uh, I don't see any signs of a Mark here, but it's still on the table, I suppose. I've been thinking about that quite a bit, and it's crazy to me. The only Mark that I know is, you know, the first syllable of our agent contact, Marcus. It's too bad he signs his emails with an M, otherwise we know his last name. I know. Maybe that is, you know, his his nickname. He's bad at coming up with nicknames, so he just added an us to the end right. of his name. <laughs> but All right, well, searching the apartment takes a while. Uh, Lou, are you going to be doing anything different? Yeah, I actually want to knock on uh, the door again of uh, Karoon. All right. Roger Karoon. He, he opens the door. He's like, yes. Terribly sorry to bother you again, but do any of you, your neighbors have a dog? No. No one in this building has Not a dog. That I know of. You've never seen a lodge dog. Um, I think once or twice I've seen like a yeah, I have seen a dog, but I thought it was a stray. Uh, in the, 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 the building's building? supposed to, the buzzer's supposed to work, but it, anyone seems to be able to come and go as they please. Dogs can come and go. <laughs> yeah, I guess. All right, you, you're remarkably uh, uninquisitive about your surroundings for a writer. <laughs> I'm I write science fiction, not not reality. Good science fiction. Yeah, well, based. good people like dogs. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your cooperation. Okay. The man doesn't pay attention to the giant dog walking through his building. <laughs> No kind oh. of man at all. I go, I go back and knock on Roger's door. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> hey, uh, Roger, you, you have, you've been here long enough to know if anybody uh, was living in that one across from you? Not that I remember. This place is often half empty. Do you know a Mark? Mm. Is there a Mark that ever lived in this building here? Uh, Let's see here. No? The only, I mean, I have an agent named Mike, but that's about it. Like a federal agent? No, like my agent, my literary agent. A federal literary agent? Oh, uh, sorry, actually, I got that NPC to say wrong. It's actually Carmen, sorry, yeah, no. Uh, the only person I <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at the wrong agent, all right. Hey, easy mistake. Carmen <laughs> Mike <Yeah>. Santiago. <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, sorry, out of character. There are multiple liter- agents in the year because these are artists, so yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, so, yeah, no, campaign. I don't know any Mar- Mikes. Mark. Yeah, or Marks. I can't <laughs> wait till we call Carmen and make you play her, though. <laughs> you can if you want. Yeah. Uh, all right. Thank, 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 thanks, Roger. Uh, so I go and knock on pu- Roger Kareen's door. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Carry hey, on. Well, a, I mean, it's fine. It's a ding dong dig. <laughs> yeah. I go. Yeah, what are, he's going to be real. Yeah, I'm so real sorry. Monster. Just one last question here. I was just wondering if you've ever seen a dog in this apartment <laughs> complex. Yeah, no, I've seen a dog. Like, there's some mutt running around. Is I it think. a big dog? Would you characterize it as? Yeah. And what color is it? Gray. Thank you for your time, sir. Okay. Love you. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Closes the door. Laryl arrives and not seeing his partners knocks on Robert's door. <laughs> Laryl, yeah, you do show up at this point yeah, uh, with the camera. I, I, I get back. I knock on Roger's door. I'm like, um, sorry to bother you. Do you know where my partners are? Have you seen any federal agents? No. <laughs> he closes the door. All right. Uh, I assume the FBI has uh, immediate DNA detection and <laughs> fingerprinting. Not. Nope. Put both uh, uh, pieces of evidence in the, in the lab it, for Q. You can make a bureaucracy check to speed it up. Okay, uh, 52 and 60. All right. Nice. Sexy uh, the, they, 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 You make it a priority. You can persuade them to have it done by tomorrow. All right, which, cool. And um, make sure Derek does it. I want to meet back up with okay, the Okay, so rest you meet the them crew. all back up. You have the camera. Uh, it's late afternoon at this point. Let's go uh, take a look at that hole. Yeah, so uh, we head down to the basement, okay. and uh, I'm going to use... I'm assuming it's something like, like a roto rooter looking mm-hmm. thing, like a... Mm-hmm. I'm going to... Uh, feed it through the hole, and okay. and I assume there's an app on my phone that will. No, it feed. has its own little viewer. Okay, yeah. Yes. Okay, so what and it, it has low light. So what do, yeah, what do I see? By the time you all get together, you get the camera out. Uh, you walk down to the basement. Uh, that takes some time, obviously, and you place the camera. And uh, at first, you see just another wall, like just inches between the two spaces, like it's a wall facing a wall. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then everyone hears. This incredibly loud chime, uh, like a bell tower or a clock tower, but it's like going off behind your ears. Everyone uh, is quite startled by that. 
uh, as there is no obvious source for that. Uh, and you drop your camera. Damn it, I was going to have you give me a call. It does not break. With that <laughs> and I was going to make him roleplay it. <laughs> Everyone but Dudley is extremely unsettled by that. Dudley, you were startled by it, but you... Uh, recover quickly. Did you uh, all hear that chime? I feel like I So I'm... you only looked in there for a second when this happened, so you could could look again to see get more. Was the was the wall that we saw was it also like a brownstone? Uh wall through the low or... light you couldn't really tell. Okay. It was brick, but like you don't see the color. Right. It's low light. But it was a, like a brick. But you, wall. you weren't able to move it to the sides before the chime happened. Get back up on that. Hole. Do I uh, do I feel like I still have fifty sanity? <laughs> you feel a little unsettled by it because again, there's also none of you know what that source of that sound was. Like, it's a clock tower that went off right behind you, and it actually hurt a little when it went off. It was right behind you. Like, you're just empty air, just, yeah. just the hallway. Like, L- it, L- Lerald grabs his ears, kind of just, like, shaken by it, and he looks behind him, doesn't see anything, right? Mm-hmm. Walter, did your old ass ears hear that? Uh, it, it, it sounded like a clock tower is... Is right, right behind. There's not a, there's not a clock on the top of this building, is there? No, you were on the roof. I mean, we're in the middle of Manhattan. Have you ever seen a clock tower in Manhattan? Much less in this basement here with us. Yeah, it sounded like it was right there, and I point behind me. I mean, yeah, that probably is a clock tower somewhere in Manhattan. Well, while they're, while they're uh, talking, I, I pick the uh, camera back up, and I want to continue looking around in that okay. space. Besides. You freeze in place, Lerald, as you look again, uh, and your heart stop- starts pounding, but you don't know why. Because you see an underground hallway that is quite large and long, uh, and there are alcoves with dozens or hundreds of bottles stacked up in each of these alcoves. And is that on either side? Yeah. Uh, and ha- and how, it runs how, parallel uh, with the basement. How far did you say between like the wall that I'm at and the next wall? Like uh, Before, it was inches. The like It wall was wall there. facing the wall. Now it's a large hallway that runs parallel with the basement. Full of the wildfire of Mad King Ares. <laughs> <laughs> it is full of bottles. Glass bottles, it looks like. Full of wildfire. <laughs> are they similar to that uh, Some of them are. Empty, they all look empty... different from each other. Okay. In terms of style and shape. Some are just a bunch of different alcohol bottles, basically? Or... Bottles. You can't even tell what's in them. As far as you... Each of them seems to have some sort of label on them, but you can't read them because they're across the hallway. From and it, they do seem to have something in them? They're not empty? Uh, they all appear to be empty. Oh, okay. Mm. Lerald, something kind of clicks in his head. He starts to feel very weird, and he just starts pulls the camera out of the hole in the wall, pulls his Swiss Army knife out, and he just starts trying to chip away at that hole. Lerald, what are you doing? Lou takes this moment to grab the camera and mm-hmm. improve his health. Or is Lou going to look <laughs> through the camera? Lou's going to give himself a colonoscopy real quick. <laughs> yeah. Um. Like, you, you address me, but Lerald's ears basically just aren't working. I'm focused on one particular thing and, Lerald, it's, and it's getting through Lerald, that wall walter what Lerald, you you, what, you all right over there no response i'm just taking the tiny little two inch blade and just chipping yeah that's the wall. that's sure yep you sure are chipping away at it it's not yeah uh after a minute yeah Lerald, you realize you're not going to get through that with a two inch knife you you can yeah, you can I've, choose to calm down or you could look for something bigger to use. I want to grab him like by the shoulders okay. and be like, "Hey, Laryl, Laryl, it's okay. It's okay. I know I know we're going through some crazy stuff, but that's what they said was going to happen." I push him off of me and I look into one of the cages and I see like a ball peen hammer and I want to get into that cage and get it. Uh okay, it is uh one of the locked cages. So, give me a criminology check. Uh it's a pass. Okay. It is also unlocked. These people, <laughs> these people do not use their. You keys. jimmy the lock. <laughs> uh, so, what are the rest of you going to be doing while Lerald is, you know, going through a toolbox, grabbing a hammer, and starting to hammer out the wall? Now that the camera has shown us this, space. well, none of you, I, okay, none of so you, we said didn't see to look. It. Yeah. Oh, okay. we didn't through the, see it. It's through I the little viewer. About that. So, gotcha. uh, if you want to, you, uh, I would say Lerald's the only one who saw it before the chime. So, yeah, you guys have no idea why I'm freaking out right now. Yeah. I'll look, I'll look through the finder. All right, you see a hallway. Again, uh, there's an alcove on the opposite side. There are actually multiple alcoves on the other side that have bottles stacked up on them of different shapes. Bizarre. You've never seen anything in the New York underground that looks like that. 
Uh, but you didn't see it beforehand, so can uh, I yeah. can I use my flashlight and look with the naked eye through the crack now and see if that has changed for me? Yeah, it's you have to push your eye right up against it because it's a narrow opening. But yeah, you can see it's now it's there. The hallway. Yeah. Okay, is anybody going to? Oh, so you're grabbing him by the shoulder to try and stop him? Well, from, I, I, well I, he's I, already I at this point. This. Yeah, okay. he's he's trying to get in. He's getting mm-hmm. into that little storage unit, and I'm just kind of like turning from yeah. side to side, being like, I don't, I don't know, yeah. Walter, Walter, what's going on over at the, there at this point? I'm I'm walking back from the storage unit with the hammer in hand, like steadfast, focused on this wall. Mm-hmm. Dudley, you remember when we looked through this crack here? It looked like there wasn't anything through there. That's uh, that's not the case anymore. And I, I think that Laird's trying to trying to get in in there. There, it it's it's changed. Well, when you looked at it earlier without the camera, you just saw darkness. You couldn't really see it. You needed the camera to see in it. So only Laird saw it pre chime with the camera I actually know, but, i would but, like but yeah. we couldn't see into it with a flashlight before now we can yeah yeah that's what i'm expecting. okay yeah that's fair yeah. yeah that is true uh what is lou gonna be doing during this time uh lou's gonna try to go up to his partner uh hey buddy uh i know what you saw through that camera might have freaked you out but a ball bean hammer is not gonna get through a brick wall so we need to either if we want to keep this off the books go down to a home depot get a power tool or we need to think of an excuse we get some kind of team down here to knock down this wall. But uh, you're not going to get through here with your knife or your ball peen hammer, so so we need to just take a breath and think about this. Lara looks at Lou, and I've got like a thousand-yard stare kind of looking through you. I give him one of Lou's patented <laughs> patented down-home back rubs <laughs> and try to bring him back. Lara calms down a little bit, but then when he looks back at the wall, mm-hmm. he rolls a melee weapon check okay. and attacks the wall with a <laughs> So I'm going to just grab Walter and pull him out of the way as I see Laryl gunning for the uh, wall. That is a 40 on a 40. 40 okay. on a 40. All right, you hit the wall. It's <laughs> at this point, uh, you hammer, you strike at the wall, uh, maybe a little chips away. Again, it's not the be- it's a better than a knight. Two but it's, inch- it's not. It's not gonna. It's a. It's a pretty strong wall. But at this, at a second after this happens, all of you just look at each other. You're none of you are sure exactly what's going on. Uh, all of you can hear a dog bark, and it's coming from the uh, la- the stairs. I'm on it. I hit the wall one last time. The hammer sticks in it, and I just like sit down on the ground. Okay. I'm 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 running back up the stairs, saying, "Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy?" Uh, Lou, I'm you, looking for you the clear dog. the top of the stairs. You're back on the first floor, and you can just uh, you hear another dog bark at the opposite staircase going up. Definitely a different dog, or it's a, the same a, dog, a different bark. Okay. It's just on the other side of the... It's going up the stairs. Did he New see... Right, I chase him through the building. Did he see the I dog keep going. at all? No, he just heard we the We just bark. heard it. Yeah. yeah. You can also hear the uh, the, the little paws on uh, tile. Yeah. Lou likes dogs, so he's going to go... He's going to keep oh, going. Oh, Lou's a good person? Okay. He's gonna so keep you're, just, going you're just following Thomas the dog. By Thomas' standards, right. yes. Uh, is anybody chasing after Lou, then? Not chasing after. I think I'll just casually walk up the stairs okay. behind him. If, if I don't see the dog anymore... I'll probably stay just at the top of the stairs in case it comes back around. Okay, uh, Dudley? Yeah, I'm going to follow Walter up those stairs, and then at the top, once we see Lou disappear up the next staircase, I mean, I think we may as well go talk to Michelle. I, I was thinking about that. Uh... So, Lou, you round up to get to the second floor. The dog's still going up. You get to the third floor, and then the dog keeps going up. I'll, I'll go ahead and go up to the to the roof. You round the stairs again, and it doesn't go up to the roof. It goes up to another floor. I want to investigate this floor. Uh, you open, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, your reaction is pretty uh, justified <laughs> right there. Basically, it just assumes that it's an old building, like we didn't. We missed it somehow. Yeah. There's been references to a fourth floor, uh, so, so he's like, "Oh, of course." You two a were watching this, this uh, or you were you were lagging behind, but you're still going up the stairs. Yeah. Uh, Laird, will you with the others? He's my partner, so I like I'm very preoccupied with this wall, but I kind of absent-mindedly just like follow behind him. So, so you're probably walking with us. You're with us. I'm, I'm yeah. with you guys. Yeah. All right. So uh, yeah, the three of you are lagging behind, and you see him going up. 
what you think is the roof. You see Lou kind of stop as he looks at the top of the landing and kind of you notice him reacting to what he's seen. Those of you who went on the roof, it looks a little different. The stairs look a little different going up here. Like, it doesn't look like... I yell down, hey guys, we missed it last time. I found the fourth floor. Come up here. Wait, the fourth floor? Yeah, the fourth floor. The one they've been talking about. Uh, was this staircase that he went up not visible? It's the exact same staircase. On? It was the it, same staircase that the same led stair- to the rooftop? Yeah. Did we hear the barks that he was following? Yeah. Yeah, you heard the dog. None of you have seen the dog yet. Uh, so, Lou, you get here first. It looks like a smoking lounge. It is a huge, inviting area. Uh, it resembles a turn-of-the-century men's club. The walls are covered in red-velveted pa- patterned wallpaper and overstuffed armchairs of burgundy leather dot the floor. A large hearth and fireplace rests against one wall, burning. Uh, there is a wet bar in another corner open for anyone's use apparently there's plenty of ice unlabeled liquors and liqueurs glasses uh bitters vermouth olives limes lemons oranges and assorted other bar goods the opposite corner a large walk-in humidor contains a wide assortment of the finest cigars uh one wall is covered in floor-to-ceiling bookcases made of rosewood with a rolling step ladder permanently attached so uh and then there is a man there a man in a cheap looking kind of old style business suit watching the fire smoking a cigar drinking uh nursing a drink looks at you uh, smokes takes another puff of a cigar uh sir did you see a dog come through here uh what oh that mud yeah he's around here somewhere what's his name Uh, he's a mud who cares all right uh this place seems a little extravagant for, uh... Yeah, come on, make yourself some... Yeah, ain't it? Yeah, it's, it's great. Make what yourself is, a why, drink! Why is Art Life so... What? So charitable. What is Art Life? Art Life, the, building, the, the building's owners? Never heard of them. Who are you, sir? Uh, <laughs> Mark Rourke, a uh, salesman. Uh, I'm working the Fuller Brush uh, racket right now. Mark. Yeah. Uh, at this point, you three can clear the uh, landing, and uh, yeah, you see a fourth floor. And uh, you see Lou talking to uh, this man. How, how does Walter feel about hitting that fourth floor? Uh, not great. Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely not great. What? Hey, they're... not like fight flighter. Sure. Yeah, but like uneasy because uh, you were on the roof previously, right? I, I wasn't one that okay, went up yeah. there, but, but they told me about this all of you, in detail. All of you have seen. You looked at the building this morning. It's a three-story building. D- 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 Dudley, this. There, there wasn't a fourth floor. Well, I, we, we looked at the plans of the building. There's not a fourth floor. This, am, this shouldn't be here. I'm well aware that there's not supposed to be a floor here, and this doesn't look like. I mean, does, this doesn't look like part of the building to you, does it? The style of architecture is generally similar, but yeah, the built the room itself is quite lavish by the standards of the uh, building. When when Lerald gets there, mm-hmm. I want to pull my phone out. Do I have like reception mm-hmm. here? I do. Yeah. Laryl, did you get a text? I I thought I did, but phantom vibration. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Oh, we got a regular party here. Hey, uh, get did yourself you, some drinks. So did you know Michelle? Michelle? Yeah, I met her. Mark, Mark <laughs> do, you, do you live in this building? Yeah, of course. Which, what, uh, what which apartment are you? Oh, yeah. I'm up on five these days. Five? Yeah. What's the name of this building? Uh, it's the McCall's. It's a hotel. It's the finest hotel in town. Can you state your full name and the date, please, for our records? What the hell should I do that for? Come on. It's just, I'm sorry. It's a, routi- it's a routine you a, procedure. Wait, are you a cop? You a cop? Oh, yes. We are. I we are. Poli- talk we're, to cops. We're, 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 the, we're FBI, so we're not really cops. We're yeah, federal agents. Stick it in your ear. I pull out my gun, and I show it to him. I pull out my badge to I, show it to him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like... It would serve you well to uh, hey, comply. Hey, I got rights. Fucking uh, commie may be present, but I got rights. Well, we got rights, Fucking too. Fucking Roosevelt. And, uh, I, uh, Lerald gets behind the bar. He makes This is what fantastic... America's come to. Bunch of fucking coppers like you. I'm just having a, having a good time. What you got? You got nothing better to do? You don't got real people to chase after? L- yeah. Lerald, Lerald goes behind the bar. He whips up a, an old-fashioned. Mm-hmm. He he gives it to Mark, and he goes, yeah. calm down, man. Just, me, just, uh, do you have Persuade? Or does anybody have Persuade? I, I do. do. All right, all right. Lerald, that is a persuade. 51 on an 80. Okay, yeah, he's oh, like, shit. well, ooh, I like this. 
Oh yeah, yeah, no. Uh, well. Laird, why don't you uh, why don't you make us all one of those? Uh, he downs the rest of his old drink in one go and just sort of tosses the glass aside and starts working on the old fashioned. While this is happening, can uh, Walter take a lap around the? perimeter of the room and do i find stairs that go further up uh this room yeah this hall continues this 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 floor continues on like this is not the end of the floor but you do see you look at the so the year there's one entrance on the side that you came in and there's an entrance on or there's a hallway leading out and uh at the end of that hallway uh you see stairs going up when i see walter and you see doors on either side doing that i want to go back the way we came and make sure that we still have stairs going down sure as uh mark is working on the old fashioned that larold mm-hmm. has whipped up for him i kind of uh take him by the shoulder and lead him towards the like bar stools and oh no he doesn't want to move He's sitting. He, there. He's, he, he's not doing it. Yeah, he's sitting by the fire in one of these overstuffed chairs. You, there's a chair next to him. You could sit. Yeah, next yeah I'm to gonna him. sit down next to him. Hey, Mark. Oh wait, you know what? I was wrong. I was rude. I'm actually on the <laughs> seventh floor. I'm, I've been. Yeah, uh, yeah. Abby's with that bum on six. Ugh. How long ago was this building built, sir? Well, how should I know? I just thought you might be an interested resident. Uh, I'm interested in the good life. This building is considered uh, the good life. Look at this place. All you can drink, all you can smoke. Better than the there life are I dwarves. Live. Yeah, you know the 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 the, the wait staff comes every once in a while. Roosevelt hasn't gotten here yet, huh? Uh, New Deal, my ass. Hey, Mark. <laughs> Mark, <laughs> Mark who guys, r- we're in the thirties. <laughs> Mark, who runs this bar? What? Uh, well, the the people on the bu- the, the hotel. I mean, um, why why are you the only person in here? Well, there's the night manager. You talk to him, I guess. Do you do you work it's here? Or? No, I live here. Fucking talk to talk to the night manager permanently or this Henry? Is a hotel? Yeah, Henry. You can talk to Henry. Where does Henry? Where is Henry? I can show you his office if you're nice. <laughs> well, he my partner brought you Maybe, in old fashioned. Let's see what's your taste of cigars. Give me a good cigar from the Humidor, and if it's if you have good taste, maybe I'll take you. <laughs> uh, he laughs at it. I walk into the humidor and I. No, I want to. I want to real quick. I want to be like, it's pre embargo. We got the finest yeah. Cubans. <laughs> well, I I look around the humidor and I look at the price tags on everything. There's no price tags. Everything's free. I go to the Cuban section. Mm-hmm. There's a cigar with Che Guevara's face on no, it. No, there's not actually. No, there's not. <laughs> no, no there's wait, not. this is certainly in <laughs> the 1930s. Well, well, that was the 60s, huh? Uh, yeah. Uh, do you know what a hepcat is, Luke? Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> hey, I was being vulnerable with you. I'm so sorry. You shouldn't have done that in front of this group. <laughs> um, you know what? I I just go in. I look at like three different ones, and I just pick out the biggest cigar that I okay. can find. Now, we do luck checks. Uh, it's just a straight 50%. You choose whether it's high or low, so just call it before you're... Okay, uh, I'll go low. Okay. I do not pass. Uh, he throws him in the fireplace. <laughs> I I sit down in the chair next to him, defeated. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Walter comes back in. Oh, we're we're smoking cigars, fellas. I I'll grab I'll grab a cigar. Right. And uh, I pictured Walter as being a cigar smoker. Is oh there yeah. Any kind of mechanical thing I can. You do can to... give me an intelligence science five. Okay. To uh, represent your taste in cigars. How old are you? Sixty four. Yeah, you definitely smoke cigars. <laughs> I crit pass a Jesus. 33 on a 65. He's like, oh, oh, you find some in the back. Like, you have to reach back. And uh, you find, yeah, mm, it actually, it it's it very enticing. Yeah, you you kind of want to grab one for yourself, too. The Dom Eduardo. Do you? I do. I do. All right. I gra- so you- I, no, actually, I grab one mm-hmm. thinking that we were smoking cigars. I'm just smoking my my nice cigar. Mm, okay. And I, sit, I go back and sit down with them. Oh, did you? Did you want? Yeah. Want, oh, I thought they were out. Yeah, no, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll go grab you one. Uh, this guy. Walter. This guy. You like a, you, a you like smell it like for you know, It's you're, a baby you're, boy. You're not bad. Yeah, like, Lou and I are on either side of Walter as he's yeah. walking back to the cigars. Yeah. Give me, give me this cigar. Find uh, one. I'll, I'll grab as many. Sure. Yeah. I'll grab. I'll grab them for the group. I'll smoke cigars. I, I didn't know you fellas knew the good stuff. Here you go. Thanks, Here buddy. you go, fellas. Uh, is. This is my kind of case. We get up here and we start. <laughs> you probably, uh, you know, you rich boy, you probably grew up smoking this, these. Yeah, these are amazing cigars. I do not smoke them in real life, so I cannot describe them. But 
whatever is the best cigar, it is that. Nice. It's uh, spicy in my mouth. Yeah. Larold has never <laughs> smoked a cigar, uh, so he lights his cigar and smokes it like a cigarette. Yeah. And then oh, just starts, and immediately just starts coughing. It's <laughs> real sick. Yeah. Uh, so you I, all actually yeah. kind of linger for a while, just smoking and thinking for a little bit. There's a, 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 a sort of lull of silence falls over the group as you all watch the fire and smoke and maybe take a drink. Did anybody else uh, make themselves a drink? Yeah. Yeah. Dudley definitely would have. Yeah. 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 And actually, julep. you feel kind of relaxed now. Uh, or do you? I get it, Mark. This is the life. This is a full bar even by Brown university standards <laughs> is that a famously drunk university it is now baby <laughs> nah. i mean it's no Arizona hey, state, uh, but they do all right hey mark you uh you mentioned abby earlier that wouldn't be uh abigail Wright, would it uh yeah yeah she ran off with that salesman yeah on, yeah what, what salesman of... yeah he's got he's doing the encyclopedia racket it's a it's brushes, fuller brushes. That's that's where the money's at. But this guy, he fucking he's a, he's a charmer. He, all the housewives go after him, and uh, so I don't know what Abby's doing with that bum. You, you're a brush man, you say? Is he yeah. like a door to door kind of guy? Yeah, or? of course. What's his uh, What's his name? I don't know. I don't remember. Think real hot. And Mark? No. What? <laughs> <laughs> I get it. It's your hour of leisure. I heard it earlier. You were just about to give us your last name, and you seem Rourke. P- Rourke. Yeah. That's right. Oh, that's right. And what year is it? What? <laughs> I don't want to think. Look, you want to go to the night manager? We'll go to the night manager. You know, we smoke these hey, night hey. cigars. Let's go see Henry. That's right. That's why we got you the cigars. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, take Let's one. Go see Henry. Let's go see him. I take my second puff of the cigar, immediately feel sick again. I throw it back into the fireplace, and I'm like, you talked about his office. His office is in here, right? Yes, it's not too far. It's just down the hall. You've Come wasted on. $5 worth of 1930 cigars, which in <laughs> 2019 money the is $33,000. Daily equivalent of $30,000. <laughs> as, as we're walking down to that office, I want to, hey, hey, Mark, you... You said Abby, she was on the sixth floor, didn't you? Yeah. And when did she move out? Well, uh, you said she ran off. How long ago she ran off? With uh, the salesman a couple of months ago? Something, I don't know. Something like that. Has, she, has she been right. back since? No, she's at the sixth floor. She's on the sixth oh, she's floor. She's still there. She's she's shacked up with that guy. Oh, gotcha. She's with that bot ah. on six. Looking down, do we still have cell phone reception? Yeah. Are there a lot of salesmen on these floors up here? Yeah. I mean, uh, it's only me and him as far as I know. I don't know. Maybe. Probably. I don't, I'm don't. i not my brother's keeper. <laughs> hey. Is that your brother? No. It's God, don't you know your good book? Y- yeah. I just... <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Uh, listen... Copper's got terrible sense of humor. I'd like <laughs> That's true. It's what we're known for. I'd like to Google uh, the McAllister okay. and see, like, try to find an architectural history of the building. Okay. You start Googling, uh, and it pulls up uh, a webpage that says, you're here. And that's, that's it. That's all it says? <laughs> yeah. It's fucking horrifying. So uh, you all are led by Mr. Rourke, Mark Rourke, to go across the hallway, and he knocks on the door, and... A old shuffling man uh, answers the door. He is wearing quite exquisite but very old clothing, almost like a like a 19th century oil baron or something like that. It, it, it like you recognize it as almost like he's wearing period costume. Picture like someone who's very rich from like 1890, even older than the 30s. But they're like new clothes. Yeah, yeah. yeah I okay. mean, well, they, they they show signs of being worn a little bit, but like, but not like they're not like tattered and in rags okay, or whatever. Yeah, gotcha. So. Um, Here's Mr. Castain, uh, Henry, I call him, uh, the night manager. He can answer your questions about the building and whatnot, uh, the hotel. And he uh, is, uh, yeah, so anyways, I'm just going to go back and drink a little more. But, you know, you, you all have fun, coppers. Thanks for your help, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Henry, right? Yes. And what is your name? Larold Young, FBI, and I show my badge. Oh, my. Do you happen to have the blueprints for the building in your office? <sighs> Perhaps. I, I, I'll see what I can do. But uh, uh, please come in. Uh, you've already had drinks and cigars, I can see. But uh, I would be, it would be rude of me not to let you in. What does his office look like? Uh, you, you're let in. It's a very rambling kind of uh, uh, apartment. Uh, there are huge stacks of papers, yellowed newspapers uh, and books and uh uh, things of that nature. You get 
somewhat of a hoarder vibe, but he motions you there's a couple of uh, chairs and a, a setup so you can all sit down and talk. He's like, I am old. It is easier for me to have long conversations uh, in the uh, sitting down as, as we are gentlemen here. Um, you know, you notice like rows of photos on the wall. They're all black and white, uh, kind of blurry. He motions to one that shows a huge crowd. It, they look kind of desolate, and you see some armed men in front of them. It almost looks like a group of like refugees fleeing a war zone. But again, the, it is a very old-looking photograph, and the the rifles look like bolt actions or something. He mentions uh, there's uh, of course a uh, father, mother, Anna, Christian. Uh, he continues on, sits down. What year did you all come to this country? Oh, I don't want to talk about the old country, uh, the old ways. You don't have to talk about the old ways. Just what year did you come here? <sighs> do you, uh, you surely you have better things to do? I, it is. I don't. It pains me to talk about old Carcosa. Uh, looking around, is there anything modern in this apartment? Uh, you can see uh, a newspaper called the New York Tribune from uh, 1923. Russo-Germanic Pact crumbles. Vienna liberated. Pretty old uh, newspaper, huh? Oh, is Henry? Nice. Can, Show it to him. Is Henry like a like Russian or like Eastern European? There's a faint accent. His English is very good. It's just you you pick up a very slight accent. Okay. Mr. Castane, we are very interested in time, and you said old Carcosa. I, I've never heard of that, and I'm curious if new Carcosa is what you consider us to be no, in now. I am an or? American now. Of course, of course. And, and I, 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 of course, mourn the, the faults of your education system. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I was I was actually uh, r- raised educationally by the finest and brightest of of these here times and I'm, parts. I'm sure you were. And you seem to be of a different ilk. If I'm gathering that appropriately, based on, do you notice anything interesting I've, about me? I, you are. Uh, I am, of course, an immigrant. Is that uh, not allowed? Is that I know there are some who are very nativist here, but I have absolutely no problem with a place that you have been before. I just don't want to be unaware of what that is, and I'm very curious as to what this old Carcosa is. I'm, I'm sorry. It, 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 it my. My physician says it hurts my heart if I talk about it. I could put my health in strain. Surely you don't want that. Surely. Yes. Can I just know, does Walter know about Old Car- Carcosa you as mean a place? Intelligence Science 5. Uh, I pass a 29 on a 65. You know all the countries, like, there's only a few hundred countries in the world. Like, there's no, there, I mean, there might be a city called Carcosa. You can't, You don't know every city on the planet, but there's definitely no country. Gotcha. Never heard the term before. We've had a, <laughs> fuck. I'm walking here. <laughs> we, <laughs> I'm walking here, and we've had reports that uh, some people in this building uh, have some pretty hot takes on current politics. What do you think about uh, what's going on today? Oh, I don't follow. I... Stopped getting the newspaper a while ago. It was depressing. The wars and the, the, the chaos and the riots. It's I don't like talking about it. I see. Do you have uh, some... Obviously, if you are police, you have some police business here? Was some crime committed? Are you investigating some... You're, you're aware of, uh, of a tenant named Michelle? Uh, yes. Ah, uh, wait. <laughs> Abigail. Abigail. <laughs> oh, yes. She's up on the sixth floor with the... Uh, what is his name? I can't think of it, but uh, he sells encyclopedias. How many floors are in this building? Oh, quite a few. Th- thank you. <laughs> can you tell us? <laughs> can you tell us when this building was built, sir? Oh, <sighs> it was a while ago. Uh, some say centuries. It depends on whether you mean the foundations or the new newer structure. This place has been occupied for centuries. You say going back even. Well, I mean, if you want to connect, it's. Uh... He sort of drifts off. I am looking at these stacks of newspapers. Yes, if you dig in the foundations. Yeah, who who occupied this place centuries ago? (laughs) Oh, you you can if you go up another floor. There's some there's something you would you would find to explain that better than I could. You must speak to the superintendent, of course. We kind of thought that you were the night manager. Yes, not the superintendent. And he lives a floor above you? No, he... But if you go a floor above, you would get some insights. We've already tried his phone. He didn't answer. Oh, he, of course not. But he... You keep looking. You'll find him. Thank you, mysterious man. 
As Lara, I want to walk over to one of the stacks of newspapers, mm-hmm. go about halfway down. Suicide into, booths installed in Times Squared uh, to the applause of the crowd. What what what's the what's the date on the newspaper? Uh, nineteen fifteen. Nineteen fifteen. Okay, I'm gonna August pull out. 10th. I, I want to yeah. pull out like one other one. August Are they? 10th. Yeah. Are they all around that? Are they that? all August 10th? No. Are they all around that year, though? Like, early uh, 1900s? The, 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 the most recent one you see is 1929. Okay. Out of the, like, uh, you spend a few minutes. Did you have no reaction to that headline? Why are you looking at See, please don't disturb my things too much. <laughs> As I read it, I'm like, I'm like in Laryl's head, uh, it doesn't really register. Dudley grabs the newspaper from you, shows it to Walter, and he's like, you see, this is exactly the kind of stuff that I think Eugene Levy would be for. <laughs> I think he would be shooting for a system similar to this. Dudley, this, this didn't this didn't happen. This this is fucked up. This 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 isn't this didn't happen. Well, Walter, I know that this might be confusing for you in your older age, but we are not in our time. He uh sort of talks, of course, I have the claim to the throne. What was the name of the newspaper? The New York Tribune. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, you have a, a claim to the throne of Carcosa. I didn't say anything. You did. Uh, you absolutely did. No. Uh, f- Four of, of us not. heard you. No, you know you it's a leave. it's a high must... crime to lie to federal he agents. Towards, God damn it, I'm uh, southern again. Yeah, he looks towards a, a door that is closed. Please, uh, you must. And then he turns back to you. He's like, please, you must go, Henry. Before before I leave, do you keep your wine and liquor in the basement here? Uh, there's no. You keep it in the smoking lodge. What's in the building next door, adjacent to the storage uh, in the basement? I don't know. I don't care about buildings outside of this one. Oh, dang. When's the last time you it's left all this building? Shit. Please go. You are tiring me. <laughs> These ghosts don't like to be confronted about the like their existential <laughs> nature. <laughs> Before we leave, Laryl places his hand on uh, Henry this guy's Hen- Henry's shoulder. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Do I feel a physical presence? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Can you? I'm walking here, and can you tell us what uh, room uh, Abigail currently lives in? Uh, There's only a few apartments on the sixth floor. It's uh, 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 S ten? No, it's a six ten. Yes, something. Yes, I believe six ten. Six ten. Thank you for your cooperation, citizen. Mm-hmm. All right. I don't know if this is going to have any effect at all, but I'm going to take that suicide booth newspaper with me sure i want to walk up to walter and get real close uh maybe grab lou in with us and just say hey do you guys think that we should get physical with mr castain here and maybe try to force out a little bit more information with force well we we're hostage negotiators you use whatever methods you feel comfortable with but uh, we like to use reached, our tongues. We've we reached the end of our abilities. You think he's uh, withholding something? Do you not? I I might just use my formidable human <laughs> to find out. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see if he's lying. Yeah, to I'd us. like to roll a human as well. Okay. Forty three on an eighty. Seventy one on an eighty. Okay. He is quite worried about whatever's behind that door that he looked at earlier. What's behind that door that you looked at earlier? It is nothing. Please leave. I'm going to walk over to the door and... He gets up and starts shuffling towards you. Please, no. It is my private affairs. I'm going to open it. All right. Uh, you open the door. It is a bedroom. There's uh, more papers in there. Uh, yeah, hand you please. Handouts, handouts. We're going to get some handouts. Not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> There's some papers in there. Mm-hmm. He's flipping. As... <laughs> as uh, Henry, right? Henry yeah, Castan. Yeah. He's physically trying to stop you as, from going in as there. As Henry I mean, shuffles over towards the door, I kind of push him back down into a chair. Okay. You don't have to roll. He's a very old. Yeah, guy. and I, I just sit down. <laughs> I just sit down next to him, and I, like, put my uh, hand on the uh, arm of his chair mm-hmm. and just kind of give him, like, a don't fuck with us look. All right. Give me Persuade. I fail my persuade check. All right, he's, <laughs> he's a feisty old man. He keeps on trying to get up and fight you. You you don't have to roll to keep him there, but you're not going to be able to do anything else. Like, I'd, yeah, okay. I'd like to uh, point my firearm at him, and I'm walking here. Do you honestly think you have any rights? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, no. no, I mean, you all like see this. This escalated very quickly. Uh, <laughs> all of you are 
you're pointing a gun at an unarmed man. So, like, what does that say about you? Uh, a helpless old man. So, uh, so probably he fucking complies, right? <laughs> he does. Uh, at and, what cost, though, Thomas? <laughs> yeah, you just feel kind of like you're. Are, yeah, you get a. Are we the baddies? Kind of moment. <laughs> <laughs> Did Hildred send you? Bastard. Mm. Uh, so you've searched the bedroom? I, I have, and I rolled a 44 crit on a 70. All right, you find a bundle of ragged and worn handwritten pages. On the on the front page, it says, The Imperial Dynasty of, of America. You can see a bunch of genealogical charts on some of these pages. Do I garner any information from the genealogical charts? Are they trying to... Is it a dictatorship that they are? Or, like, you know, is it a... It's like, a, who's supposed a, to have the throne of America? Them. Yeah. Who is the first? What is, yeah, what is the name? Uh, there? You see the Castain name mentioned? Uh, Henry awesome. and Hildred uh, several times. There, there are notations on these. What was the other name besides Hildred? Uh, Henry. Henry. Is it Hildred With- Castain? Mm-hmm. So Henry, as in the man you have at gunpoint, right. and Hildred, who is apparently related to Henry. I immediately come back into the room, and I look at Lou. All right, so Lou, if we're looking to get in on this uh, imperialist America that we seem to be living in at this juncture, I would say that in order to attain the most power, we are going to want to refrain from holding maybe the future king yes, at gunpoint. The, the crown is mine! You fools. Oh, uh, actually, you... the way he's reacting now makes me think that maybe Hildred has it, and he's no. just some dumb he's asshole who's stuck here. He's a pretender. Yes. He's... You, you are fools to trust him. He will have you executed to keep a secret. I am the rightful. I, the, the throne That's... is mine. Well, it seems like you need to help us. Hildred's your older brother. He's a cousin and a bastard, and I, I'll, when I take the throne, I'll, I'll not kill him. That'd be too good. He'll be locked away. I yes. mean, I'm walking in. It kind of sounds like you're the pretender. <laughs> you uh, are enemies of the state. I mean, Hildred currently has the throne? No. We, uh, is that the... Uh, you, you vie? You, you vie together for the he's throne? He's at his precious museum. Is there a uh, old-timey telephone or, around? Nope. <laughs> uh, can I do a search roll for a Rolodex? <laughs> There's no Rolodex. What's your brother's phone number? <laughs> He's at the gallery, you fools. This precious, well, uh, the gallery of shades, of course. Meaning the gallery of shades? Yes. Where's that? It's like blinds and... Is that on the seventh floor? (sighs) You don't know how to get there, do you? No. (laughs) You see, we're making light of your world. It's your in it, too. For now. Yes. Tell us how to get there. Go up a floor. You'll see the means of egress. Fellas, everybody's telling us to go up a floor. I think we should go up the floor. I mean, it. <laughs> I'm walking in. It seems like we have no other option. I kick over a stack of newspapers as I leave the <laughs> the room. He's ranting about you all being <laughs> the suicide booth, more like execution booths. Yes, you shall all be uh, sentenced. You will all be sentenced. You close the door on him, Your Majesty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> When we step out in the hallway, Dudley is immediately going to... Uh, Rourke is gone. Rourke is gone? Yeah. Okay, then he's going to look at the three fellow agents and... All right, so here's what I'm thinking. Time seems to be a real bitch in this situation. So I'm thinking if we go downstairs, we will have been gone longer than we thought we were for where we are now based on all the information we have about Abigail Wright. That leads me to believe that if we go downstairs, we might have the information that we sent off for as it might be one day past when it was earlier in this situation, I am down to go upstairs and learn more information. But if we go downstairs, we might garner a little bit more knowledge before we head further upstairs and into what can only be seen as madness that we're trying to avoid. Perhaps that our actions and world are controlled by some kind of uh, all-controlling master, a game master. <laughs> Perhaps and not. Uh What if we made it harder for him by splitting up through time? (laughs) (laughs) If your theory is correct. Why don't you go downstairs and we'll keep going up. We should be on the... Did we leave a floor to uh, once we left the night managers? You're still on the fourth floor. We're on the fourth floor. You're next to the smoking lounge. So I I hear what... Lerald hears what you're saying. I feel seen. Let's go downstairs, check out your theory, and leave these guys to it. 
to go upstairs. We'll meet back up with them. How about that? What are you What are you hoping to find from fingerprints now? Fingerprints, DNA, most, and, a, and a team to break through. The I wall. think mostly what I'm concerned about finding out is the ability to break through that wall in the basement and get into those tunnels. Here's Here's what I'm thinking. Uh, we. We're, we're sitting here to figure out why Abigail had a yellow sign in her apartment, so why don't we just go talk to Abigail? That's what I, I would like to press on to the sixth floor. Walter, that is why I want to learn as much information from you as possible is or, because or you or have these up. fantastic ideas, and I want to gain as much of that intelligence as I can while you're still around living. Oh, oh is it more that Walter wrote <laughs> down wait, the wait, objectives wait. of this mission when it was stated to us? I'm and... not. I'm, I'm still going to be living. I'm just retiring. I'm going to go mm-hmm. live in Florida. You sure. trying not to go Bernie. I'm trying not to be Bernie. But <laughs> all right. So is the group going up to the fifth floor? I, well, yes. we might be splitting up. Okay. I'd like to go up. I'd all like right. But I up. also am fine with sending Zach down to handle things. Who's Zach? Today. I'm going upstairs. Yeah, I'll, I'll follow along. All right, everyone's going upstairs. Under his breath, Larold's like, "Oh, Daddy didn't teach you everything." <laughs> <laughs> Did he? You continue upstairs. Uh, you get to the fifth floor. It is. Uh, it seems a little more squalid, though. There's more cracks in the walls. It looks a little more run down. However, as you go up the stairs, uh, of course, there's stairs leading up to the sixth floor. But you can also see down the hallway, very obviously, uh, shovels and pickaxes. Uh, and it looks like somebody's been working on the wall. Um, there is a large hole in the wall. You could walk over and see what's in the, the, the hole. What's we in the hole? do that. Uh, you see that same tunnel. With the uh, glass bottles, exactly. Like, yes, exactly. It is. Is it uh, the hole in the wall big enough to that fit through? Yes, makes me want to throw up. This would have been really cool if I was standing on the other side of this hallway. <laughs> <laughs> have you read this scenario? Walter does really not like this, okay. or I don't know. Walter has a very strong reaction to this. Is he really intrigued or really repulsed by that? He is really intrigued. All right. Yeah. How does Lou react? Is he intrigued or repulsed or utterly baffled by how the exact same tunnel can be in the basement and on the fifth floor? Baffled and repulsed. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Walter, you actually step through. You just walk in. You you duck your head a little bit, and you're in a cool uh, tunnel. Uh, I mean, cool as in, like, the temperature. Uh, it is noticeably uh, uh, cool. Plus, it's sweet. Uh, <laughs> there are hundreds of bottles along the uh, far wall, and it leads off. Uh, there's actually candles lit off in the distance uh, in the tunnel, so there is some light. With my memory of the outside of this building, does it look like it goes beyond what it should go? Yeah, it's also an underground tunnel on the fifth floor. Right. So yeah, of a building with three floors. Yeah. What time does what does my phone say? It says eleven fifty nine a.m. p.m. right before midnight. Yeah, and that's that seems to me like how much time we've been in the building. Yeah, you also look at your phone. You get you get a text message. What's it? It's from you. (laughs) What did I say? All of you uh, see Lou look at his phone, and then he uh, looks at all of you and says, "Have you seen the yellow sign?" And then he holds up the phone to look show it to you. Lou, you don't remember this. In fact, you don't know you're doing it. Uh, then you're just looking at them. They're looking at you. What time was the text message from? He just eleven fifty nine. Thomas is just staring right, at Lou, us you, with huge everyone's eyes. Everyone's looking at Lou. Everyone's looking at you, kind of oddly. Yeah, yeah, Lou. We've seen the sign. That's why we're here to. We're trying to find it. It was Abigail Williams wrote it down. Is this a picture of the paper that Abigail Williams left in her apartment? Uh, it's not the exact same one. <laughs> Oh shit, it's, Walter! Uh, this is a different picture. This is not the yellow sign that Abigail drew. It looks like drew. it was actually drawn on the wall of this building somewhere. Lou with yellow paint. Lou, Lou where'd you get that picture? Lou, that's a, that's not the one we've seen before. You you take that earlier? I, I'm I'm walking here, and I guess I must have. Uh, I'd like to look up the time and date of this picture and see when I took it. Here and now, Lou. I look around. I guess for the. Lou. Uh, yeah, it's actually behind you. Why? How didn't you see that? Hmm. How did any of you not see that? It's right. Yeah, right. Uh, it's right there. Lou, call call your phone number. You I, did, don't, you, I don't think you can do that. You didn't send that text. Does he need did a you? new voicemail message, outgoing me, message? Uh, I, I'll call my phone it number. It starts ringing. It's from you. How would that work? <laughs> <laughs> That's what your phone says. <laughs> it's just, Yeah, this is just something that happens with Answer cell phones. Answer the phone call. It goes to speakerphone. Hi, Lou. Uh, Agent Gord here. Who's no, this? I, I know. Um, I'm just telling you, uh, your invitation's been set, sent. Uh, didn't you get it? This is Marcus. No, Lou, you need to come. We're waiting for you. Do we recognize the voice? It's Lou. It is Lou. Yeah. 
He didn't say We're I'm walking waiting here for first. you. Where? Just once you see the lake, go around. You'll come to the palace. What's waiting for me there? It's so great, Lou. That sounds real creepy. Why would I? Lou, you're going to die. Your body's going to rot. But it doesn't have to be like this. I don't know. I've pretty much come to terms to the fact that uh, me and my wife Grenadine are going to die together. No, no. You don't have to, though. And you're not. You're going to... Lou, just come on. Come on. Where? You know. I go to where I know. I start walking to where I know. That's the tunnel. Okay, I stop. (laughs) All right. The phone hangs up. I have to pee again. <laughs> no oh, shit. shit. <laughs> What do you think it is about Missouri that has attracted so many people to Delta Green? You know, it's funny because a lot of the Delta Green uh, writers actually met in Columbia, like uh, Dennis and oh, really? uh, Lancey. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. And Tynes were all doing grad school up in Columbia. So, yeah, I don't know what it is about being trapped in the Midwest. That well, I think it's like, because like, everybody <laughs> everybody in the Midwest kind of wants to die. Yeah. So if you can do it in a sci-fi way, then... Yeah. <laughs> I've had a lot of opportunities to leave, and I know a lot of people who have, but ultimately... I'm staying I here the rest of here, my life. So <laughs> it's the, it's it's a lot, it's cheaper to live here than anywhere. It I'm is beautiful. cheaper to live here. Yeah. Well, it's basically now that you have the internet, like yeah. there's no reason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You it's get like, all culture a day later. Yeah. You don't need it like any yeah. sooner. Dude, um, your internet's a behind dude, a day. My favorite is like talking to my friend Hannah that lives in Seattle. Uh, I was like, yeah, my rent is three hundred dollars a month, and she's like, <laughs> she's like, I live with five people, and my rent is nine hundred. And I'm like, yeah, Jesus yeah live in Spring. Wow. <laughs> live yeah. in Springfield and travel I mean, instead I can, of living can, in Seattle can, and staying there forever. I can write forever. and podcast full time because it, I, can, right. I, I I can get just enough of buy and live in Springfield. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's, totally, a, um, yeah. it's awesome. So, anyways, you just got a call from yourself, and uh, that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That was awesome. And then you started walking down the tunnel. Well, he stopped. He did say he stopped. So yeah, you you have control over yourself. You don't. You can you can do whatever you want. Um, but yeah, you're on the fifth floor. You see this tunnel. That's the tunnel you saw in the basement. But now it's been opened up. Uh, someone opened it up. When you said the sign was behind him, was it on yeah, the yeah. wall in it the hallway? The wall. Mm-hmm. In the hallway yeah. behind us? Gotcha. Yeah. What does it look like, actually? Uh, if you just Google yellow sign, you'll see it. Yellow sign, uh, okay. Yeah, that three trifoil kind of symbol. Um, like a question mark on top with two lines coming mm-hmm. out from the bottom. Yeah. And it's not the one in the TV show. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you all should have seen it. None of you noticed it. But... Is it this? Yeah, it's that. Cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. So uh, you said like in the hallway. Is it in like a framed picture kind of thing, or is it like it's just painted on the wall? Paint, painted on the mm-hmm. wall. Okay. In our briefing, uh, did we? The yellow sign is a vector uh, for some kind of contagion, but you haven't. But you were not given information beyond that. Uh, but the, theoretically, they do know more. We just don't. You actually do get the impression that they're withholding information. Okay. From you. you did make your uh, uh, human checks on that. So cool. Cool. You. Do know, yeah, your mission is to destroy the yeah. source of the vector. Uh, that's so, your Delta Green mission, but you're... Uh, expanding on that, I'd like to scrawl out the sign, if I can, from the bricks. With what? Uh, any sharp object, if... Okay, Is sure. it just written, like, how, how is it's it? It's painted. It's painted? I hand over my Swiss Army knife to Yeah, you. yeah I you just want to scrape it off. It takes you a minute or two, but you okay. can do that. So yeah, again, um, you scratch off the yellow sign on the wall behind you. It takes you a minute or two, but it's Larold seeing the hole in the wall because he was so preoccupied with it in the basement. Yeah, it, it he, cannot physically exist he, because it go, would go through what you can see, and the rest of the hallway would be other rooms and doors. Right. Like, so uh, Larold has to go into this hole. That's well, his choice. But it yeah. was made for me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you you start walking in the tunnel. Uh, is anybody going to follow after him? I was a little way in. I don't know if Walter does want to go too far. Do I see an end on either end? Uh, you see uh, uh, in the head a candlelight, but that's it. You can't see. Um, you don't have night vision goggles or anything. It's it's it is fairly dark. Uh, you all do have flashlights, so you know you can. When you shine your flashlight, it looks like it goes off to the side. I want to approach the uh, bottles. Mm-hmm. 
take a look at those. Each one has a name on it, a person's name. Uh, what's one of your bonds? Gerald, my brother. Yeah, I've Gerald got, Young. There I've is. got I've got Dale, Sleepy, and Gerald. Yeah, Gerald Young is on there. Uh, what well, is I inside of this bottle? Of it seems to be empty. Are all what? the bottles empty? Yeah, they're all sealed, though. I'm going to take the bottle that has Gerald's name on it and open it up. No! You cannot. <laughs> I, Thank it's God. impossible to open it? Yeah. I want to smash it on the ground. It bounces off. Hey, Lara, why'd you throw that bottle on the ground? I gotta see what's inside of it. It's got my brother's you look name inside on of it. it. There's nothing in it. It's got my brother's name. There's something, something's fucked up about this place. I grab a nearest bottle to me and look at it. What if your brother's soul is in it? What's one of Dudley's uh, bonds? Tad Bush. He's my frat bro. <laughs> yeah, Tad Bush. This one says Tad Bush on it. Does Tad, anybody? Tad Bush. You know Tad. You know Tad Bush. Yeah, we go way back. He was my best man. Why do these bottles have people's names on them that we we know? Wait, and I, I mean not all of them. That that was just the first one you grabbed. I grab I grab that one and I I look at it. There's nothing in it, but it's sealed. Mm-hmm. It is. A, it looks different than the others. Like each bottle has a unique appearance. But there, yeah. none of the bottles have anything in them. Nope. You should get out of that tunnel immediately. Yeah, none of you have like followed the tunnel out. You're all within sight of the hole. Okay, let's at least go talk to Abigail before we go down this tunnel any further. Okay, I'm with. I'm with you. When we handle these bottles, do we feel any different, or are you taking them with you? Or are you gonna? I'm ta- I'm taking Gerald's with me because I I don't know what's going on, but it's it's sticks out in Laryl's mind. Okay, are all of you in the tunnel at this point? I was back by the carcasses sign. So everybody but Lou is in the correct. Right. All right. So you go to leave, Lerald, and you don't see the uh, hole, and you don't see either of them. I don't, I don't see. <laughs> I don't see either of these guys. No, you see God, you two. You see you. All three of you see each other, but you don't see the hole anymore. You don't know why. All of you looked away for. Do they see the second. crack? Uh, no. So, but they see a wall. Yeah, they see a wall. So I'm I'm where the hole was. Mm-hmm. Lou. Uh, I want to just start banging on the wall where the hole was. All right. Do we need to split this up, or um, how should we play this? The three of you give me idea checks. What am I What's rolling idea? on for that? Mm. Intelligence sounds five. Sorry. I rolled an ot seven on a 60. Okay. 37 on 85. Eight. Those of you who made your intelligence checks get the idea. Maybe you should put the bottle back. I, I put the bottle it's back. It's not your bottle. That's my... Yeah, I put my bottle back. Yeah, do you I put, do as well. Uh, you, their hole is there. What the actual fuck? I want to, like, as I'm Thank looking fuck at... Fuck who here again. As I'm looking at the hole, I want to grab the bottle and just, like, lift it up a little bit. Does the hole disappear? Um, while you're looking at it? No. I go into the hallway. I'm getting the fuck out of the tunnel. Uh, okay. Yeah, as soon as I see the hole open up, it's like... Yeah. Okay. Like, like yeah. gasping for no air of freedom. Yeah. yeah. No gonna... bottles on us. And then I say, hey, Laryl, throw throw me the bottle. I what? throw the bottle through the hole <laughs> at... <laughs> it misses. Laryl, think fuck. Does it, like, Wait, it dink off the wall or... No, it, like, you try... You, you thought you were going to go right through it, but it hits the ceiling and just falls to the ground. I get the fuck out of there, <laughs> and okay. I, I run through the hole. Yes. All Thumbs right. up. Uh, as you're as you're beginning to leave, uh, give me an alertness check, Laryl. Pass. Okay. Uh, as you're turning back, uh, for a split second, you look behind you. Uh, you see a man at the far end of the tunnel. Uh, oh. oh no! He is uh, looks very finely dressed, almost like a waiter or something, uh, and he's <sighs> holding a bottle, holding like a something something leg. A yeah. bottle of Gerald. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you have a sense that's your bottle. <laughs> this bottle but, and then you're out of the tunnel. Laryl sees that, continues running out of the hole, mm-hmm. and I run towards the stairs. So I'm gonna go upstairs. All right, guys. He was a soul Malier. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'll drink it. <laughs> <up. laughs> Cheers. All right. So um, Laryl bolts up to the sixth floor. Walter's a little wide eyed. I don't. I don't want to go back in there, fellas. That that, that was. That, what did you see in there? The wall closed up. We couldn't. We couldn't get out for a second there, Lou. The wall was always open. What What else did you see in there? There was uh, there were bottles with people's names on them. We knew a couple of them. Could knew a couple of the names. You didn't see my name, did you? No, we didn't see your name, but we did see Tad Bush, which was a good friend of mine, and we also saw Gerald Young, which is Larold's brother. And none of the bottles would break when Larold tried to break them, and then he just. Hopped through here looking wide-eyed like a goat and just took off into the distance. You saw bottles uh, with people you, you knew his name on them and you tried to break them. Laryl did. He, you see how he's gone now and he ran to the in the hallway? Uh, yeah, Laryl, you get to the sixth floor and there is 
something directly on the ground in front of you. It looks like a small goldfish, but it appears to be made out of gold. <laughs> like a goldfish. Yeah. So like a little like gold sculpture of a goldfish that is goldfish sized. That's clever. I wonder if anybody's ever done that. I look at it for a couple seconds and then obviously... Do you like, look, like it's on the ground. Are you yeah, I it? look at it for a couple seconds and then bend down and pick it up. All right, yeah, it it look it is uh, amazing craftsmanship. It looks exactly like a real goldfish, but it is weighty like, you know, I mean cuz it and it feels like gold. Uh, I want to do the classic uh, pirate thing where uh you bite down on it and try to bend it to mm-hmm. make sure it's real gold. Yeah, it is. I pocket it. Okay. And I I continue down the hallway. Okay. We pop up behind him and we're like, "Hey, what do you have in your mouth?" <laughs> I pull the goldfish out of my pocket and uh, talk. There's a dead goldfish in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> you were eating a goldfish? Why were you trying to eat a goldfish? Where'd you Guys, find that goldfish? It was made out of gold, I promise you. That sounds crazy. We all look at each other like, nah. I want to look around for a yellow sign. Uh, you don't see any. Can I do a search roll? Sure. I, uh, Laryl also throws... Six. He throws the goldfish at... We've been rolling so low today that I'm worried it's going to come crashing down around <laughs> us <laughs> real soon. <laughs> it's fine. It's Enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> so did you make your search, Chuck? Yeah. Um, you actually look, turn around the corner and you notice there is a large mirror. And when you look at it, your clothes look a little different. More old-fashioned. Uh, it's like a tuxedo, like a <sighs> evening wear. Um, and there are people behind you. Also in party dress. This is so fucking creepy. <laughs> it's like the shiny. Hold on. It's, yeah, it's yeah. just the shiny. <laughs> don't, don't worry. <laughs> uh, in fact, it's a very large crowd behind you in the, in the reflection. Does it look like uh, the reflection is... Is there anyone dressed as a bear? 42 on a... Ah, 80. Nice. Oh, yeah. So you succeed. In the back, you see a very, very large figure like in long, tattered yellow robes. Seems to be beckoning you. Does the room look like the uh, the smoking room earlier? The, no, the it's lounge? the same hallway. It's just there's like a it's a party procession. What do the people in the procession look like? Normal? No, they're partying. Like they have masquerade masks on and uh, flapper dresses and tuxes, and they're passing drinks. Um, you begin to smell smoke behind you and uh, the scent of liquor. I step in. It's a, it's a mirror. Dunk. <laughs> Do we see him Doink. run into a mirror? Yeah, he he's looking around the corner very intently in something, then he bumps his head on something. Lou, what was that? I'm walking here. And <laughs> don't worry about it. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk over to my partner and look in the mirror as well. You see a procession. Do I also look yeah, different? You're wearing a tux. Keeping my eyes like at a side view on the mirror mm-hmm. and walk up to where a person would be. There is a beautiful woman in a flapper dress who is uh, coming up behind you. Uh, and then you feel her uh, touch on your cheek. And you turn around jerking reflexively and there's nothing there. When you turn back, the mirror is reflecting reality. I want to sh- hold the goldfish up to the mirror and see what happens. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, the goldfish is flapping around in your hand. In the mirror, but in the not mirror, in your yeah. life. Refle- Thanks. Reflexively, I drop it. Okay. Uh, and then... Clink. I, I don't want to be looking in this mirror anymore. Okay, that's fair. Walter, what? Where is Abigail? <laughs> <laughs> six, uh, six, six, ten, I think the net manager said. What are... What are you fellas doing over there? I didn't go around the corner. I didn't. Okay, so yeah, you're at 610. You actually hear a man and a woman yelling at each other in there. Like, they're having a bitch. I, why? I don't... Whose perfume is that? You know, you son of a bitch. Uh, you're, you know, don't. It's nothing. I'm going to pound, pound, pound Cop on the knock. door. But as I'm doing that, I'm yelling down the hall to the guys. Hey, there's there, there's a disturbance in here, guys. I, I, I hear people fighting. Oh, look. You you to, you pissed off the neighbors, you son of a bitch. You low get down. Uh, you're just like your mother. F- F- FBI. Um, The door cracks open. What do I see? You open the door all the way? If it just cracked. Yeah, it just cracked open. Are you going to push it all the way open? Oh, uh, yeah, if I felt it give, sure. It suddenly stops. There's absolute silence. Like, you son of a... And then you see a statue of a man and a woman. In the room? Yeah. Made out of what? Uh, Marble. Like, sort of a Greek style. Do I see anybody else in the room? No. (laughs) I mean, there was a disturbance. I don't... Yeah, you, you, all of you heard some shouting. You couldn't make it out from. Oh, where thank you... God, you all heard that, and I didn't have to explain to you. What? Uh, 
what 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 else is in the room uh, when it we is look empty around? aside from the two statues? There are very literally little. nothing else. I mean, there is actually a. Well, I mean, there's a curtain. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk in and How see. How long does it? Sorry, are they on a plinth? Yeah, I want to. Is they're, any, they're like Greek style statues. Is there any kind of um, plaque or ownership or signature or anything on the bottom of the? Plant. Uh yeah, actually there is gallery. There is a little placard. Uh, I was wondering the gallery of yep. shades. I mm. I literally learned the word plinth just now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big Luke. day. <laughs> it is a big day. You've... What was my other stupid thing? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know what a hepcat was. Yeah, until the bar opened. Did we have a picture of Abigail for mm-hmm. this mission? Can sure. I just compare? I assume it's her. It looks similar, but similar. you know the hair is different. Obviously, it's done lo- like in an ancient Greek style. You know, like Athena or something like that. Not like Abby, who wore her hair loose. You know. Well, it looks like we found Abigail and the uh, salesman. It's similar. Well, it looks like we found a statue of Abigail and the salesman going up to the statue. Mm-hmm. Um, not trying to like break it per mm-hmm. se but i want to pull the ball peen hammer from earlier out and okay. uh see if i can't just chip away like an inch or so and see if there is anything beneath sure. this do it, statue do it on the it's, <laughs> it's just marble There's nothing blow. Front with an inch yeah okay now if we <laughs> took an inch off her should we go back in the hallway close the door and see if she starts yelling about being you know hurt super cool idea an inch is so much to take off a person <laughs> Sorry, what was that, Lou? I'm walking here. <laughs> and an right. inch is so much to take off a pussy. Uh, so uh, so you close the door. Yeah. On, they immediately start yelling again. Same stuff? Yeah. They actually refer to you, we had fucking FBI in here. You son of a bitch. What trouble are you? You gonna, I'm not going to go to jail for you. Opening the door are the statues. The door is now locked. Oh, Fuck. it's locked now. I'm going to do a criminology roll to uh, see if they uh, actually forgot to lock it. This time. <laughs> uh, no, it's locked. I mean, you can you can make a strength times, strength times five check to knock the door down or bust the lock open. Can I do a criminology to pick the lock? Jimmy it. Yeah. As he's doing that, I'm going to kick it from like the side of him. <laughs> uh, 48 on a 60. But it doesn't uh, matter because he's disturbed by the massive kick. Yeah. That- <laughs> Oh yeah, crushed it. Crit okay. success. All right, yeah. So as, keep crit twenty two. Twenty two on a seventy. <laughs> as I'm jimming it, uh, you kick me and I fall through the door. <laughs> as you're launching your foot over there, all of you can hear like a burst of gunfire, automatic gunfire. Uh, anybody with firearms check could make to identify the type of gun used. Uh, I got a ten. I pass. On a yeah. I crit pass a forty four on a seventy. That's a Tommy gun. Like, you've heard that before. And uh, when the door swings open, the statues are gone, and there's a large blood stain and trails leading to the window. Is the window intact? Uh, the curtain is still drawn. I'm going to go over to the window, throw the curtain open, and is the window open? or? Closed? Yeah, uh, you. It, the window re- opens up into a uh, l- 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 what looks like a dining room. Are there bodies inside? No. Nope. Blood? No. Nope. Anything? Walter, uh, you see a dog, a gray mastiff. Uh, at the far end of the dining room. Boop, boop. And he sort of then goes away. Then goes off. Hey, bu- hey, hey, bud. You could open the window and crawl into this dining room. There's no other way into this room that I see through this window? I mean, it's at a window. What period does the dining room look like it's from? Similar, like to the style. 20, okay. Yeah. I'm going to open the window, but not crawl in. I'm going to open the window and do the whistle snap. Here, boy. Does the window from this side look like it's supposed to open to... A dining room? The outside... Like not a, yeah, it's yeah. an outside r- window. Okay, uh, yeah. is there blood uh, past the window? Oh yeah, do I see? Uh, give me alertness checks. Pass. All right, Crit yeah. pass. Damn, dude. There is a faint. There is a faint blood trail, and the, uh, yeah, you whistle and a uh, like a shaggy or a kind of a, a mutt mastiff kind of dog pulled back. <laughs> And sort of walks up, sort of sits like near the window. Kind of like, mm-hmm. I want to hold my hand out to the dog. Yeah, you you you'd have to get in. He's he's outside of reach. You'd have to get into the room to. I absolutely do that to go see a dog. Walter absolutely does not. <laughs> All right, Lou. <laughs> uh, uh, the dog is there. You can you pat him. Yeah, I'm gonna follow my partner into this room as well. Okay. Is there anybody? Any? Well, you're in a dining room that's six stories above. In a, yeah, you're fine. Any cafeteria <laughs> workers? Or? It's a dining room, like a person's dining room. Like, what, watch oh, where, watch where you step. Like, the whole time I was picturing a like, dog's dining room, not like no, a dining, like a dining hall. hall. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> is there a like okay. a refrigerator or? Uh, not in this room, but you can see a kitchen adjacent. Uh, I'm gonna go check out the kitchen. Okay, it has a 1920s, 1930s style uh, refrigerator. Fellas, watch where you're stepping. I mean, that, that's a crime scene. There's blood on the floor. We heard gunfire. Uh, I'd like to go to the door of the apartment and mm-hmm. open it up and see what number it is. Uh, you are on six. 30. And we came out of 610? Yeah. 630. Uh, I want to shout that information to the boys in 610 okay. and then ask them to go down the hall or go outside 610 and see if they see 630. We're down to do that. All right. They, like, our, yeah, there's no way. that 630, like, it, there's only four in the main hallway of the McAllister building that you're familiar with. There should only be four apartments. This one is floating in midair. Are they like 610, 620 or 610, like 611? 610, 611, yeah, yeah. Okay. Six ten, six eleven, six through six thirteen. Or? Uh, there's no. Well, they skip thirteen, six or fourteen. <laughs> yeah, no, okay. of course. Yeah, finding the door that leads out of six thirty, like in the hallway or whatever that it leads to. What do we see? Uh, to six thirty. It's an. It looks similar to the same one, but it has the the expected numbers of six thirty, six thirty one, six thirty two, six thirty four, or six thirty three. Do we see a staircase leading out of there? Sure, you sure do. We we make eye contact. And as you're doing that, you actually see a, a man in a waiter outfit carrying a tray of hors d'oeuvres. Does he look familiar? No, he's it's, never seen it's not the he's same. He's rather old and wizened. No. Sir, sir, pardon me. Hmm? Yes. Who Would lives like in this apartment? Many people. Oh. No, in, in 6.30. Oh, it's not my place to say. Would you like an hors d'oeuvre? No, I'm, so, I'm sorry, sir. Maybe you don't understand. Uh, I'm a federal agent. I need to know who lives in this apartment. Have you spoken to the night manager? He uh, was unfortunately taken ill and was not able to talk to me. I oh. need to talk to you. You must have ta- talked to the superintendent then. Uh, sir, I'm talking to you right now. I, I just don't know. I just serve hors d'oeuvres. Mm-hmm. Could you uh, give me a description of the person who you are coming up to serve? Uh, anyone who wants them. Uh, what room were you going to? Uh, all the rooms. Do you want well, the, This dish you have right now. Where were you taking that? Uh, a guy rounds the corner and says, oh, You said you're a federal agent? Uh, he's dressed, he, he, you see a uh, uh, cable company uh, logo on his uh, work outfit. Like a oh, modern god. cable? Yeah, like, yeah. Oh. Like, oh god, you're a federal agent? Uh, yes, sir. Oh god, oh thank god. Please, get me out of here, get me out of here. When did you come here? Uh, I don't know. What day is it? What day is it? <laughs> What day did we come in the building? Uh, August tenth. I'm not gonna look up. Uh, August. It's August a 10th. Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we got we got here on a Monday. My August work order 10th. was July twenty second. Uh, what? Uh, um. This may sound like a strange question, but how long does it feel like you've been in the building? Like 20, 20 days or more? Six months, maybe more. What if? What have you learned of the mysteries of this building? <laughs> Get me out of here, please! <laughs> I'm going to help you, sir. Oh, thank God. We are going to help you, but we need to know what you know. Uh, the order of le- waiter starts walking away. He sucked anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have, wait, uh, sir, have you, <laughs> I'm like, stop. Wait a stop. Sir, have you ever seen he this? He points to his tray. Do you, do you want something? What do you have on your tray? Uh, there are little cubes. Uh, they look gelatinous. Uh, and there is something inside them. Something golden. Tell me about what you're serving here. Oh, it's the latest. I tell me more. I'm not a chef. I can't. I, must, I'm, not, I'm not really a, a trend follower, so I need a little bit more than that. I think baby lake serpents. Uh, in gelatin. What lake? Holly, of course. Holly? Is that what you Holly? said? Yes. Lake Holly. Yes. H-A-L-I. By the palace. You must have seen it. If not, just, just go up a level. The Gallery of Shades is uh, near. Thank you, sir. I'll, I'll take that into consideration. <laughs> Please let me get out. Yeah, uh, so he starts cab- cable guy. Cable yeah. guy. Yeah, my name's David. David, uh, come with me. All right. we're, we're working on this together. David, what have you found out about living here? I, 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 there's just... There's some party going on, and uh, but it's a prison. I must be in a prison, right? Why do the windows only open open up to other rooms? I haven't seen the sky. I don't I don't know what the sky looks like anymore. What what floor was your order for? The third. And how did you how did you make it up to another floor? I don't know. Okay. Uh, well, this is a very mysterious building. I understand your confusion. We are confused too. Come with us. Okay. Are we going down? Are we trying to get out of here? Yeah. I've just committed to doing James Adomian's Bernie. Yeah. So (laughs) that's where we're at now. (laughs) All right. That's my Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And uh, come with us. Okay. It can be your Brooklyn too. (laughs) Wait, where where are you leading this guy to? 
He's just coming with me right now. Um, Hopefully back into 6.30. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can take him to 6.30. Is this going down? Is this getting out? Uh, as down as we know. Okay. So I, th- I feel like Walter and I are back at the window looking in on the dining room where mm-hmm. it's the apartment that Lerald is in. So then we would see mm-hmm. uh, Lou come in with Dave into this apartment, and I would immediately be like... I'm walking in. This is Dave. And uh, Dave also, I think, comes from our world. And uh, yeah. Hey, how does Dave look to us? Uh, he looks like a cable guy. Does he look healthy? Is... No. Yeah. He looks like shit. Yeah. He smells. There's this thick layer of sweat on him. Uh, he smells bad. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a mess. Dave, come back on through this window here. I'm a federal okay. agent with the oh, Federal Bureau of Investigation. Oh, My father is the deputy director, mm-hmm. and I am more than willing to get you right on oh, out of God. this place and thank back you. onto the street. Thank I help you. him over the threshold of the window. Mm-hmm. How, long, how long you been in here, fella? Months. How do you uh, how, how you been surviving? You been eating the there's, eating stuff? Yeah. There's If you walk around, there's there's like beer and champagne and little snack trays and things. You got your you got your phone on you? Oh, it died a while ago. They, they don't their outlets are weird. Have you been to the palace? No. Okay. Have you? They met- talk about it. Anytime I hear people that don't sound like they're f- from this time, I understand. Yeah, it's yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, this is about a dream. Carcosa. What? Yeah, they've t- they've mentioned that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Have the have you met a Hildred? No. Okay. I, don't think, I haven't talked to anybody. You're the first people I've talked to because I'm you so didn't scared. talk to anybody for six months. Well, Lou, he I probably tried. doesn't you remember. You were the most awkward <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> I was scared. There Literal, was, there literally was a, a wallflower I for six there, months. There's a there's a business guy, but he was kind of creepy. He told me to look at the books in this lounge, and these people are fucked up. What oh, you books, met Mark. What, what did the books say? It's, they got pictures. Yeah. Bad pictures. Dirty pictures. Yeah, bad, dirty pictures. They're wearing masks, and they're hurting each other. Well, okay, so don't kink shame. (laughs) He starts crying. I mean, it might not be 2019 in here, but it is in our minds. Yeah, that is well within the realms of... If everyone's wearing a consenting masks, adult, yeah, wearing masks and hurting each other is pretty well, David's sexy, not, actually. David is king shaming, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, that ghost waiter, he talked, he said... He said the palace is on the next floor, and uh, he said the gallery of shades was on the next yeah. floor. Yeah, well, he he mentioned the palace from the gallery. You can get to the palace. Yeah, from the gallery you can get to the palace. And I, what we I still haven't it, done it, is talk to Henry, Henry. I think it was Henry talked about walking around the lake to to get to the palace. I think oh, that was that, no, that, that was, was that was other me. That was that was other you the walking right. in. That was other me. Yeah, you got to walk around the pond. Okay, you got to walk around the pond. Okay, so what I'm seeing here is that we need to remember Walter directive that he keeps directing us back to which is like making this vector disappear so before we get ourselves a little bit too more involved in learning about all this how might we get rid of this world and perhaps everyone inside i'm gonna pull out my phone and show uh david the picture of the yellow sign you seen this anywhere david he flinches and cries so you have (laughs) He's just starts to hyperventilate. Have you seen a man in yellow robes? He's not responsive at this point. I, I, I slap I'm put, him. I'm putting the picture back in my pocket. Okay. I'm not showing it anymore. He's just, I mean, like, he's in shock. Like, he is a broken man. Hmm. David, are, are you with me? Have you have you been? Well, he just says, I want to go home. I have you, go home. Have you been home. higher than this floor before? I don't know. David might not be useful back out in the real world. Just want to throw that out there. Let's take him with us and let's go upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> and I like that. Laryl walks towards where the stairs are. All right. So it sounds like the group is unanimously go- deciding to go upstairs. Yes. Right. Okay. Walter, you said yes. Are yeah. you going up on the 630 wait, wait side or the 610 side? Should someone stay down? I think that splitting the party at this juncture might be unnecessary. Based on narratively every... unwieldy. Wait, so are there two staircases? Yeah, there's two hallways. Because yeah. we could go over across through this other apartment and then through the 630 hallway, or we could stay in the 610 hallway. My opinion is staying in the 610 hallway first, because then we have access to the 630 hallway later, perhaps. That's, I, I agree. That's, I agree. Okay, so you all deadly. come back to the other, to the 610 side, taking David with you. The, the, the David, cable. you understood all that, right? He's just babbling. He's just, he's just clinging to you for... We're leading safety. him like a dog. See, like <laughs> I said, perhaps useless. Yeah, he's in shock. So, um... 
I'd you... like to push him a little bit in front of us. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, he's leading the way. Uh, he's sort of whimpering. Uh, yeah, you all are great human beings. Um, <laughs> so you continue up, and you find um, the hallway actually opens up into a larger structure. Uh, what appears to be a museum uh, hosting the work of dozens of different artists paintings there are sculptures and you can actually see there's sort of you actually begin you it opens up into a very large gallery with a skylight oh, revealing a night sky um, there you go david there's your there's your sky paintings sketches uh statuary kinetic sculptures folk art handmade books uh magic lantern slideshows etc they are all meant to shock or disgust. Uh, there are the lanterns show people being butchered in shadow, obviously. There are uh, pa- elaborate paintings of mass graves. There are people, you know, there's statuary depicting a person being flayed, uh, you know, having the skin peeled off. Do they look like they come from different artistic periods? Yes, yeah. Paintings of the strange landscapes. A sketch of a Paris cafe where a woman's eyes... Uh, it, it doesn't appear overtly weird but just the way the people look directly at you you feel a bit unnerved by it uh hey lady lady well, it's in the painting lady i know okay <laughs> <laughs> can you hear me yeah. ma'am uh, do the eyes appear to follow you they do but as you do that naturally um you can hear someone humming something <laughs> in the next room over it is a very large open room um there are paintings going up to the ceiling uh another skylight but uh, there is a man there uh, attending to the paintings on the upper part of the floor. The thing is, he is just floating in the air, looking at the paintings. Um, he what is, kind of clothes does he have on? Uh, actually, very similar to Henry's. Okay. Uh, um, so and there are there are staircases leading up to balconies on the second floor. Uh, so you could see what's outside the gallery if you wanted to. But there is the man, and he turns, he, he sort of like rotates and sort of says, Oh, hello. Welcome to the gallery. I'm walking here, and how are you not? I <laughs> <laughs> Walking is so pedestrian. Hildred, I presume? Yes. yes. It's very nice to meet you. Heir to the throne. When is your takeover happening? Is it imminent? I don't like to discuss matters of politics in uh, the gallery. It's This is for art, not for such... Is politics not some sort of art in and of itself? Uh, let's see. What are you, Roger Stone? <laughs> Yeah, I have a Nixon tattoo on my back. I didn't mention that earlier. Fuck, my notes are so scribbled. Uh, yeah, there is. Uh, he is actually quite young and handsome looking. Uh, he, uh, there's actually you notice one of a portrait of him on the far wall, which depicts him in a ceremonial military uniform. Seems quite calm and pleased with himself. Are you the military director of Old Carcosa, sir? I am the true king, if that's what you mean. That is exactly what I meant. Uh, Who yes. is the of current Carcosa king? Carcosa or Imperial America? Of America, of course. I am uh, a guest here. Uh, you must go to the palace if you want to meet can you, the, uh, the sovereign there. Can you tell us how long your dynasty dates back to? Oh, centuries. What year is this for our... <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so interested on such a mundane matter? What do you feel? Well, tell me, uh, what visitor? It, it's, what is an, it's simply an investigative. It's simply an investigative technique to de, uh, discern the honesty of the person we're interrogating. Aww. What can you please state the year it currently is? I will and not your full be name. interrogated by such a lowly constable. Should we go up on the balcony? If you wish, that way we'd be less lowly. <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> that's good are you all going up on the balcony i'm gonna go up on the balcony i want to make direct eye contact with hildred okay i'll follow i'll follow deadly yeah i follow as okay. well uh while we were walking walter these... you're having a real bad time <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> uh because you see an alien city that you've never seen before uh of, of buildings of a variety of architectural styles, an impossible assemblage of uh, structures, all surrounding a lake, and across the far side of this lake, you see a palace uh, whose towers reach into the night sky and beyond. Uh, It is uh, an impossible uh, view. There are... uh, The tower seems to reach up to the moon itself. Uh, The stars look different than anything you've seen before. So fight, flight, or or freeze. Ooh, uh, he would be, um, 
wait, how do you do this? You do what do is you your rank immediate? Them? You get to, you get to choose which are which is your immediate reaction of the oh. three. Uh, hey, he does freeze instead of faint, which yeah, is freeze much better. Uh, yeah, 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 faint, faint, freeze. Those are about I like the same. Freeze. I like freeze too because it's a very human reaction. Yeah. yeah, freeze. All right, yeah, you just you're just frozen in terror, uh, seeing this, uh, and the lights at the palace are on. Uh, there is some there. You can, even in the distance, you can see people uh, entering the palace. Movement in mm-hmm. the painting? No, it's it's. Oh, you, it's a window. Yeah, it's a balcony uh, revealing the city itself. This isn't the painting. You're, you're. Oh, for some reason, I thought I was looking at a painting. Oh shit! Now I get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I get why I had this reaction. <laughs> uh, no one else has a stronger reaction, although you all feel uneasy about it. Um, yeah, but you could also be at eye level with uh, Hildred if you want. But yeah, Walter is freaking. Yeah, just. <laughs> Yeah, the, the people. Move. David, by the way, has collapsed in the previous room. He sort of huddles up in a fetal position. That's yeah. probably what for the best. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The Literally. the pres- the people going to the palace. Does it look like the procession we saw earlier, or I saw earlier? You can't tell from this distance. Okay. I want to pull out my phone, go into like selfie mode. Mm-hmm. Do I look like myself, or am I? Yeah, seeing and something similar to are you what taking I a saw photo in the of yourself I'm gonna take a picture of myself holding the photo it out, shows landscape. something entirely different uh, all it is of you in some sort of ballroom I'm not even in the same room no this is a ballroom this looks like the style of architecture of the palace like the, the same color walls but the uh, there are many masked ball attendants around you that's, that's what I figured so, oh, fucking, you figured that what <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's why yeah. I did this. That's why I took Because you thought we were in the palace across the lake. No, I mean, <laughs> I didn't you. figure the palace. I figured that, that it wouldn't be an ordinary picture. Mm-hmm. That's, that's so, okay. That's so not creepy. Then pretty safe bet. Yeah. Fair. Hildred, now that we're on a higher level, yes. would you like to tell us what year it is? <laughs> no. I still wouldn't. Okay, that's fair. But <laughs> what if we said you is, had is he to. is he still like floating? Yes. Your father has ordered us to tell you. No, tell. he hasn't. You know of not a, what is my father's name? Titus. You and... know well your father's name and we dare not speak it here. <laughs> you are pretenders, obviously agents sent by Henry to sow confusion. It is pathetic, really. What's pathetic is Henry. That's what I would say. Mm, uh, yes, that's exactly what an agent of Henry would say. To throw me off my suspicion. No, no but he's you, really you, terrible. Honestly, you've you've seen Henry. You know he's not capable. Of, of course, I things. know that. But you obviously, for some foolish reason, swore loyalty to him. And we didn't uh, swear anybody loyalty to anybody. Again, your lies, father. lies, lies. I understand your oath. You know, I'd reasons. like to. I'd like to persuade him that I'm working for his father. <laughs> you can't unless you can name him, which you don't have the name. <laughs> It probably starts with an age. Daddy. <laughs> Your daddy has sent us here. Oh, you know and daddy? And I'd like to say it in just... Lou, you were here a little while ago. I thought you were heading to the palace. And there's an apostle, Lou. And uh, oh, an what, what it, did, did Lou speak to you? Yes. He what said he, he was quite happy to go to the palace. Uh, his wife, uh, Grenadine. 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 <laughs> yeah, Grenadine was uh, waiting for him there. That's simply not true. Grenadine is waiting at home. Uh, with dinner ready, because I mean it's not that we're exactly old fashioned, but you don't have to cook. Uh, <laughs> Grenadine would not have to cook there. She the, all the finest foods are at the palace. Listen, uh, it's also like if I could read morning. you my my <laughs> motivations, it's to love Grenadine, love God, and fight crime. <laughs> Uh, you don't sh- uh, such a for- forthright man. <laughs> don't you deserve a break? <laughs> Relax. Go to the palace. What confused what is, you? What, what did you get force? lost? What's for us at the palace? Uh, it's an amazing uh, mask of ballroom. I'll attend that a little bit later. I have to finish up Hildred, here. Hildred, I'm confused because it seems like you want to be in charge here, but you're currently not in I'm charge here. I'm the king here. of America, not of Carcosa. Obviously. Where and geographically Carcosa, does Carcosa lie to America? I'm not here. I'm not your geography teacher. That palace, is that in Carcosa? We are in Carcosa. Well, is the palace in America? <laughs> No, it's here in Carcosa. Wait, so then why aren't you in America? I have to I have the claim to the throne. I am the true king, but I there are many pretenders and I must outmaneuver them, pretenders such as Henry. It is quite the intrigue. I you're a constable and you are lowly agents, you have nothing to do but to uh, me. Again, I can only tell you that we are agents of the king. Uh and you you best respond. I don't believe you. I'd like to persuade you. <laughs> <laughs> 
I know you would like to persuade me, but you cannot. <laughs> I'm quite unpersuadable. It's uh, a mechanic of my character. Yeah. <laughs> damn, damn it. <laughs> I so, understand. Uh, Laryl wanders out to the balcony. From the balcony, um, there is a garden beneath you. It actually looked like it would be quite soft to fall down. I was going to ask how, how high up am I? It's not I? very high. You could easily There's no out. ladder or... Uh, how about this? Is there a lattice with ivy growing on it? Sure. Uh, yeah, there is. I'm going to 1980s rom-com mm-hmm. climb down the lattice. All right. Yeah. You're on the street. You see the lake ahead of you. How far away is the palace? It's it's a bit of a walk, but you could if you get to the lake, you could just walk around the shore. Yeah, so I'm going to... Uh, what I have written down, uh, what Lerald has written down is walk around the lake to the palace. Mm-hmm. I'm going to walk around the lake to the palace. All right, Lerald's on his way. I mean, Walter, do you think we should lose him this quickly? Am I still frozen? At this point, you've recovered. I'm walking yeah. in and he made his choice, but we came to this floor to talk to Abigail. Seeing Lerald walk into the city kind of like, ooh, that's... That mm, don't like that. There, Le- I don't. I don't, I don't like it. But you, we've got to talk to Abigail. We got to. We got to. Oh, Abigail, right. Um, she's with that uh, salesman. Uh, they, of course, are quite excited to be uh, invited to the ball. It's quite the honor. Uh, no, I think they're dead. Oh, Have no. they already left? Yes, of course. They're they're, I the, imagine they're having quite the soiree right now. Can you point us to the rooms? They're at the palace. I need to see the living quarters. I don't know. I'm not. F- I'm not the night manager. I'm not like a lowly servant like Henry Hildred. What's your goal? To get the claim. Uh, to to wait until the time is right to get my claim to the throne. So it's all a waiting game for you. What are you doing yes. until then? Outmaneuvering fools such as you. Well, well we. <laughs> that hurt. I must confess. I I do have secrets. I I don't want to uh, be. Taking you uh, from you, you have no earned. Shit, Sherlock. <laughs> uh, they're over there in my office. Your secrets? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why don't you go unlock them? <laughs> I don't care. I know what my secrets are. Can I do a glance around this this entire area that we're in for right. yellow signs? Uh, yeah. Give me a word check. I pass a fifteen on a seventy. The artist's signature on every painting is a yellow sign. How many paintings are there? There are hundreds, it's, dozens. Okay. It's at the wall. This is a very large room. This is like, think of like a big ass museum room that's like two or three stories tall. Every single part of the wall is covered with paintings. Different hey, things. Joe. Can I just... Nice, Joe. Can I just point at one that's nearby? Mm-hmm. Hey, Hildred, what's what's this mean? Oh, Emile Blanc, uh, a fine symbolist painter, yes. Uh, that that yeah, This is his work, an early work, but uh, yes, uh, uh, shows and his that's promise. his signature. And I, yes. I, I kind of circle it with my finger. Mm-hmm. That that means his name? That is his name. Emile Blanc. We do it with him. I don't. Do, <laughs> do I still have uh, my cell phone <laughs> signal? Mm-hmm. Can I, I want to Google Emile Blanc. Do I have anything come up? Uh, you get a call from Emile Blanc. A call from him? Call? Yeah. As I'm Googling him, I get a yeah. call from him? Emile he Blanc. is such an attention whore that he said it to <laughs> auto-call anybody. He's got a Google alert. <laughs> I, uh, yes, I am Emile Blanc. I, I hit answer and speakerphone at the same time. Why aren't you at the palace? Uh, it's your voice. Uh, <laughs> me? Yes. It's your retirement party, of course. You Is this Emile? You've carried that weight for a long time. You've got to uh, unwind. Come, come to the palace. Why do you sound like me, Emil? Because I am you. <laughs> me, Emil, sounds like <laughs> like you don't know French. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, me, Emil. <laughs> I'm I'm Walter. I'm not a, I'm not Emil. You're Emil. I'm I'm Walter. Nom de plumes. That's French for potato. You need to. <laughs> Put down the put down the badge and pick up the paintbrush. Name of potato. <laughs> oh man, is there a literal paintbrush anywhere nearby? Uh, yeah, actually, you see one in the uh, the office door, uh, past the office. Oh, hang on. So that just rang a bell for Joe. Mm-hmm. I think it probably went for my character. Didn't Rourke say that he sold brushes? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, this is just cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, he hangs up. Yeah. Okay. Walter, you're not going to become some sort of artist are you (laughs) wow i can't think of anything more horrifying
as I walk along the lake, you're actually making really good progress. You're already at the shore of the lake. Uh, yeah, I I want to <laughs> I want to flash my. Fl- almost fucked it up for everybody. I want to <laughs> I want to flash my flashlight into the lake and see. Uh, do I see anything in the lake? You do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Tonight, <laughs> there are dim lights. Exactly what I thought. Uh, there are dim. <laughs> yep, there are dim lights that emit a glow from somewhere deep underwater. It starts to flash in almost in response to you flashing the flashlight. Am I uh, weirdly attracted to it? Um, Do you I know. <laughs> I mean, the palace. You can see the palace. It's impossible not to see the palace. It is getting larger and larger. Um, you do see uh, a boat drift across the lake it appears to be unoccupied and uh there is there you find a smaller boat that is uh on the shores obviously i'm gonna get in that boat is it a motorized boat or like a rowboat rowboat i row to the unoccupied boat on the lake uh so yeah you're doing that and as as i'm doing it i'm still flashing my flashlight mm-hmm. down into it the lake seems to, to be responding can... to you okay yeah uh give me an alertness check Big pass. <laughs> okay. You begin to see shapes, like dark shapes, but uh, and then something very large passes under the boat. I row faster. Okay. Are you rowing to the palace or just following the lights? I'm rowing to the boat. Okay. As you get further into the middle of the lake, uh, fog starts to come. Gross. Yep. Uh, the... <laughs> Thanks. Like, like thick enough that I can't see or just... <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That was unintended. Ropes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Loves you. Uh, uh, you. The boat actually goes into the water, but it just like doesn't sink. It just seems to be sailing into the water. Oh, that's awesome. So is it like beneath the surface? It's going at an angle. Yeah, it's going below the surface. Like yeah. half of it? How close to it am I? But as though that was its intended... Tr- trajectory yeah. is that what you mean yeah. oh that's cool i want to try to get as near as i can to okay. it and see if maybe i get sucked in as well yeah uh <laughs> you, you're <laughs> so a role playing game <laughs> is to get sucked into something <laughs> i'm just going along with it dude <laughs> All right, we'll get back to you in a second. So. <laughs> okay, cool. If the uh, uh, I'd like yeah. to get subsumed. By I think that. It, I think it, it'd be fun if you're cool with it. If when the scene cuts back to us, you see the door where the secrets were is open, and I'm walking into it. All right. Uh, is anyone following Dudley? I'm going with him. Okay, uh, Lou. What about you? What are, are you staying out there with uh, Hildred? Going to walk towards the palace, trying to find a way out. I don't know what. What do you What do you think of Lou? I'd like to try to find a way out of here. Right. You can go back the way you came. This is how we got to the sixth floor, uh, or you, the fifth floor. No, you're on the seventh. Seventh, yeah. We went out in six ten hallway and then went up yeah. from the six ten hallway. Because six ten was the window that led into six thirty, mm-hmm, and then right. we went upstairs. It's very... Actually, I'm going to hang out with Hildred and ask him what TV shows he's been watching. <laughs> he doesn't know what a television is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bummer. Gonna, you're going to learn, buddy. What movies has he been watching? He floats away from you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I go after my friends. <laughs> All right, so the three of you enter into the office, and it's very dark, and you can't see the far walls. The door closes behind you uh, on its own. Flashlight and gun in cop mode. Yeah, and then you start to hear the other thing. Uh, you can actually see a little bit of the office. It's a small, cramped room. Uh, that you're in, but then you start to hear the oddest thing, applause very distantly, and then louder and louder uh, I bow without thinking about it and (laughs) the walls of the office all four walls of the office fall down, they're like stage walls, and you're in utter darkness until a second later the curtain starts to rise and you're on stage there is a huge crowd uh, around you. Abigail is gone. She, she moved upstairs today. The crowd roars. You can only see their silhouettes. Yeah. Yeah, none of you are doing well with this. Uh... <laughs> I hope you just mean the sanity checks and not like having yeah. fun role playing. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Yeah, full disclosure, this is miserable and I yeah. hate that. Yeah. 
I just want you guys to know that none of you are doing good. <laughs> you're all Your characters a, are not. None of you are all actually, having a bad time. Uh, none of you uh, got to the fight, flight, or freeze. Uh, okay. But you're close. It is. Your entire awareness of spatial relationship of where you are is now totally gone. You're on a stage in a theater. Uh, the door you came in to just fell to the ground. to be the dog. And then the applause stops, and then there's silence. And you just see the, there are lights on you, stage lights on you, and you can just see the dark silhouettes of the audience. My uh, mother was born in a small town in Georgia. Is that in the script? No. <laughs> you need to read from the script, motherfucker, <laughs> like you were. Uh, you can all three give me alertness checks. I pass with a 12 on a 70. I crit fail with a 99. I pass. Those of you who make it uh, realize that all of the audience is utterly still. None of them are moving. Attentive. You look closer and, yeah, so you can actually get off the stage and look at them or you could, or step forward closer to the edge of the stage. I think that's what I would do. I'd go downstage and look at them. I did theater, so I know that downstage means closer to the audience. (laughs) They are all like human-sized marionettes. Uh, uh, fuck! Uh, a door at the far end of the theater uh, opens up, re- revealing light. Roof, roof, and I run towards it. Okay, I'll follow. All right, I don't follow. I stay on the stage. Okay, uh, you can give me another alertness check. Secret secrets are no fun. Secret I secrets pass. hurt someone. Uh, there is. A, you see a fire exit door. Where are you, where are you guys? Where are you guys going? We're following the light with the dog. There's an exit sign right here. I'll turn around. And just like pause in this sea of marionettes looking back at the stage. And I look back at Lou, who are you in full dog mode or? I run smack into you. And you see uh, me on the floor looking up. And we almost kiss. (laughs) And then I just don't. If we go through. Okay, okay, all right. Let's get our bearings, okay? If we go through any more of these exits, we're going to end up further and further away from where we need to go. We need to get rid of all I these. I just go towards the yellow- emergency exit. All right. Uh, oh, the emergency exit? Okay. Yeah, I just go all towards Joe. All right. Uh, Walter. Okay. I- uh, you. Those of you who are halfway to the uh, light door, you can actually hear people on the other side. I'll, I'll go ahead and just at least peek my head in and look, but I'll stay with my body on this side. Okay. Uh, I'm going toward the fire exit. When I look back at the stage, Mm -hmm. is it uh, darkness behind there? Yeah, except for the fire exit, yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, is the fire exit at the back of the stage? mm -hmm. Got it. Now I'm with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Cool, cool, cool. In the wings. Dudley. Okay, so you see Dudley peek through, and it's a blinding light, and then a pair of hands grabs you and pulls you in. Oh. Uh, Sick. Sick, sick, sick. Can Uh, I try to do the thing where I, like, let him grab my jacket and then, like, slide out of it? (laughs) Uh, you're startled yes. by it, uh, and it is a pair of woman's hands, and you are uh, she is trying to help you dance. Uh, you are in a ballroom. Oh, baby, I don't need no help dancing. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> you two see that he just disappears into the light. Are you going after him? Deadly. Uh, he's my partner, so yeah. All right, uh, Lou. Fire exit or the light? I I see uh, Walter running for the light, mm-hmm. so I'll go in too. All right. So meanwhile, uh, Lerald. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I love that you have to say that name every time. <laughs> it's honestly probably my favorite name that I've so had. So you're underwater, but you can still breathe. You see the tops of buildings come towards you. Can I still see the, uh, yeah, you're following the, it. the boat that I'm following? Okay. Yeah. It is guiding you through this impossible city uh, until you come to a lake and you surface again on the other side. You you swam through the mirror version of Carcosa, which is Carcosa, and you're at the front door of the palace, which was exactly the same. It was Carcosa. It looks exactly the same as the other palace. Mm-hmm. Are people filtering into it mm-hmm. still? In fact, you see, uh, you think you see Dudley for a second. You also see the dog. It barks at you. It's on the shore. It seems to be... If I think I saw Dudley, I'm going to chase after him. You can give me an idea, Jack. Is that intelligence? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. There's a crowd around me. They're like, go, Dudley. Go, Dudley. It's your birthday. Yeah, uh, solid pass with a 93. <laughs> oh, not really. That, that is not a pass, yeah. <laughs> you know what you know, so you uh, you made the choice to go into the palace. Right, yeah. I'm going into the palace trying to uh, locate Dudley or or, he, or at least what I yeah. saw he saw Dudley. He saw Dudley in the procession, right? Mm-hmm. It wasn't in the room. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah so, yeah, I'm going in, heading into the so palace. So you're all in the palace. 
and uh, you're all wearing your finest ballroom uh, tuxes. Uh, you're wearing masks. Uh, the, the, the masquerade ball is in uh, a full swing. Uh, midnight approaches. Uh, as you do so, the somehow you know that the Phantom of Truth is about to come, is about to uh, uh, arrive. <laughs> <laughs> I think clarifying it made it worse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's it. You are all now uh, as you oh, as you. Oh shit! Did we just lose? Um, <laughs> no, we won. As the as the clock strikes twelve. Um, a, an impossibly tall figure in yellow robes arrives uh, and it is time for everyone to remove their masks and he says I wear no mask and uh, yeah you all see the cosmic truth you are now forever and you were always meant to be uh, at Carcosa oh my fucking god <laughs> whoops <laughs> are we at least happy yeah, are we happy in Carcosa? That's not, that's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> Holy shit. Dudley, in the back of his mind, knows that we are all comfortable as humans are supposed to be. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you are all now uh, permanent residents of Carcosa. You are lost uh, back in reality. <laughs> uh, Agent Marcus, you, four FBI agents go missing. So... The Mount Calster building mysteriously burns to the ground uh, in a week later. <laughs> Better Holy agents. Holy shit. Yeah, uh, right. You <laughs> uh, all of the tenants were evicted, uh, uh, and all of them disappear as well. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, woof. The program oh, is woof. rough. Well, they were already evicted. Like, they were already infected with the King and Yellow. So, mm. uh, yeah, that's what happens. There is, uh, to give you a spoiler alert, There, is, Abigail's gone. She is already at the palace. That's the only way. And if you go to the palace, you're not coming back. <laughs> yeah. And so you're saying spend we more time on the sixth that. floor. <laughs> yeah. um, and there's no, and there's basically no way to like find her or anything. It's just how long do you keep exploring the night floors until you decide to f- get out or, well, if you keep going too far, yeah. you get to the palace. So what you're saying is we found her. <laughs> yeah. We won. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Was, yeah. Thank you. Sure. Ended, uh, Fellas, that was never our mission, though. Yeah. <laughs> now we nailed it. We nailed it. We found Abigail. <laughs> we are the champions. It does Maryland friends. Bow, bow, bow. Uh, so we'll question. keep on fighting till the end. Bow, bow, bow. Copyright filter. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, so, question comes to questions. Yeah, I assume everybody had fun. So, yeah. yeah, that was dope. Oh, yeah. Yeah. great time. Yeah, I Ross, am... thank you so much for yeah. running this. Yeah, one. thank yeah. you so much. For yeah, yeah. Seriously. yeah, for trapping us in Carcosa. One, one thing I've learned is don't ever buy cigarettes in Maryland. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh yeah. Oh, so yeah. what the... was up with that? And also, you also learned what Hepcat was. So yeah, that 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 was a red herring actually. The uh, uh, basically her trash was good, including <laughs> her credit card was in her trash, which. Was di- w- which was thrown out, and a homeless person found that, and then sold it, uh, and then gotcha. someone else yeah. might not use sure. it. So yeah, for not for making the party, you need your party favor. So uh, oh, uh, Ross was handed us enamel pins, so. enamel oh, pins shit. for our PPR. Thank That's you. sick. Thank you so much. Yep. Thanks, dude. Oh, yeah. These are tight. These are tight. Yeah. How cool. Fuck yeah. You uh, have just listened to the <laughs> first collaboration between RPPR and pretending to be people. And but there will be more. There will be there more. There will be more. Yeah, this was awesome. Dude, uh, uh, I would love to, if you would run, what was that game you were talking about Eclipse earlier? Eclipse Face? Yes. Oh, that, that, sounds awesome. super fun. that sounds dope. Eclipse Face, yeah. That, uh, yeah well. Have you ever heard of Dungeons and Dragons? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck out. <laughs> Um, but yeah, basically there's a whole, uh, list of encounters that I didn't use them all. Like also every tenant changes radically at night. Oh, uh, cool. so if you're in the what? building when it becomes night, then it becomes the night floors. <laughs> oh shit. So, uh, basically I was going to rule if you ever made a serious determined effort to get out, you'd get out the first night. Um, so you could have like gotten out and be like, what the fuck do we do? But if you went back the second night, you were probably going to wind up in the palace. But, uh, like, what, what, you guys cool. just like, no, we need to keep going. We yeah. Let's keep, keep exploring. Let's yeah. stay in this building. Yeah, it's yeah. midnight. We've so, been here. That's yeah. fine. What yeah. was up with the, uh, the like waiter that had yeah, it's just one uh, of the, the, bo- the bottle with my oh, name the, on it? The, um, so that part of it is actually in Carcosa. That's called the whisper labyrinth. Um, and <laughs> fuck yeah. Yeah. 
uh, if you find a bot that he would have had your the bottle with your name on it, right? And you right. can open your bottle, oh, and so it would have whispered something to you, and then it's just a bottle. So like, but that you can leave <laughs> with your cool. bottle as well. Sure, but you can't leave with anyone else. Oh, nice. So, so that's just yeah. kind. And the whisper labyrinth leads into the city, which leads into the gallery of shades, and blah blah blah. Like, there's a whole like there's a in, in Countdown they have the a chapter called the Haster Mythos, which explains how to run games with these themes. Um, so you can do set this another. You can actually do more of a slow burn, like make this a campaign theme where you're slow. Gotcha. Like weird shit happens where you're doing another opera yeah, mission. You know? Sure. And like uh, I was just amping it up as we progressed. Yeah. Because yeah, like yeah, that's uh, super cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. The dog. Uh, so yeah, all the characters trapped in the night floors are called phantoms. The dog is technically a phantom, but he can go anywhere at any time. Yeah. Yeah. Like, could we have like used the dog as like a well? He was gonna or... if you followed the dog at that last junction. And he would have led you out. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give everybody that Wait, one last choice. I thought that's what we tried to do. So like, to, if well, you went that way, she would have gone straight to the castle. So you like, can't, you can't, you can't half-ass. You can't peek into the palace. If you go, if you go, if you go, if you look, if you cross the threshold at all, you're fucked. Yeah. So like, that's what happened to your character, uh, Joe. Yep. So, uh, but yeah, and you two went after him trying to save him. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. You're, you're so fucked. like, so Laryl, you, I wanted to give you one last chance to like, nope. I'm out. <laughs> well, no, I'm yeah, out. like when you gave me the chance of like, oh, I should probably do the other thing, but I'm sticking with. Luke that goes choice. headlong into the end. Oh, I, <laughs> I absolutely do. No, that's fine. I mean, like... so is the is basically the goal of this scenario to just to leave? Yeah, it's well, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's yeah. There's no winning condition except for maybe burning the building down sure. it's yeah. my favorite kind like <laughs> it's just realizing you don't you you can never understand it like the mysteries go on for in in infinity like right the building always extends forever uh weird shit keeps happening there's like there's a lot more encounters that like i didn't even use you could just That's make super stuff. cool like the f- cell phone stuff wasn't in the scenario i just made that up sure so, right. yeah that was dope by the way uh, which is which is yeah because yeah, like, it's such it's such a tr- cliche to say oh your phone doesn't work saying, no oh no <laughs> it's gonna work yeah. <laughs> also calling you and be like um wait i was <laughs> listening here. to you guys you guys were like oh yeah well it would be creepy if you who, if, if you sent it or whatever it's like oh yeah no that's yep. definitely what happened well yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I love that too. yeah like having uh yourself call yourself from like the other side of the lake oh, i yeah, suppose but dope. anything you that's but dope. the way it works is if everybody if you suggest it, it could happen like um anything could happen if you all believe oh yeah obviously there's a big ass like fucking uh dragon on the at the top of the building like oh yeah you'll find a yeah. dragon sure <laughs> oh, i mean i cool. think that's uh like a the call of a great gm is rolling with it you know yeah you like one of the encounters could be you come across a book full of unmarked uh, a room full of unmarked books you open a book will find appears to be a turn of the century text depicting in great detail one of your uh, a dream y- your investigator had oh cool is dave dead super cool um, yeah, what happened to Dave? Oh, yeah, Dave, Dave, well, Dave. Dave's fucked. He's been in a trap forever. He's just a dude. He, if you're in the building at night, you're trapped uh, until morning, and of course, time flows differently. Um, so, but if you try to make a steady effort to escape, he uh, was there to fix the cable and end it. No, up. he's actually there to cut it off. He was there I mean, to, like, to fix Don uh, the cobble because yeah, yeah. everyone stopped paying their bills. Because basically, what happens, um, the the vector is this play called The King in Yellow. And once you read it, you start. And then, of course, because these are all artists and writers, they all showed each other the play. Oh, yeah. okay. cool. Every, cool. Everyone was affected. That's like, tight. If yeah. you went to the sci fi writer's uh, room at night, he would have just been writing. And, like, if you snuck into the room, you would have seen him talk. He had a giant mirror that he was, and he would, like, listen to it, and his mirror image would suggest things to him and you could hear whispers Dude. and if you like if he detected you he would try and murder you so like, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah so what was up with like the uh the statues like abigail was it abigail and oh her? yeah that was yeah, that's just uh, one of the encounters it's like the gallery the, of yeah. shits yeah that that's just one of the encounters was there yeah. anything else to like nope. gather from that it's just other than it chaos just being and entropy and cool? it's just <laughs> like things are going to get more and more surreal the longer you're in there yeah. the further you explore i love it that's love a really it. cool it's idea like, it's literally you can't do anything to stop it aside from trying to like get away and <laughs> nope nope can't see it nope. yeah <laughs> you can't that's understand dope. it you it, trying to understand it is what makes you lose um yeah impossible landscapes um uh, but you can use these themes in other games like make a more subtle thing just every once in a while like you just see like you're having a gunfight and there's like a small child in archaic clothing walking around and she just all the bullets miss her 
And then you, you're just what the fuck? And like, there's nothing. It's just something weird, unexplicable. Yeah, we would have tried to save little girl Neo for sure. <laughs> Thanks again, Ross. Seriously. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much, Thanks, yeah. dude. Fantastic. I'm, yeah, you're all great. Thanks. Bless you. <laughs>